What's up, everybody? Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast podcast is brought to you by Babel, Electric Bikes, Game Time, and Rocket Money. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Uh, I'm Nate Bates, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, Dusty Slay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I gave you two names. Yeah. Yeah. Bates, Brian Bates. Bates, Brian Bates. Uh, welcome to the, welcome back uh, to the show. <laughs> uh, we're in it. We're off to the races. Off to the races. It's already started. It's good to see everybody, man. I know. It's a hot podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. This is a, this is a good one. We had, uh, I had a good weekend this weekend. It was very fun shows. And I felt good with my Where were you? hour. Uh, I don't know, but no. Uh, <laughs> he looked up on the screen to show it. Oh, well. Where was I? I was I know just Richmond, Virginia last night. Greenville, Sunday. Greenville, Jacksonville. Uh, and Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville, Greenville, and West and uh, Richmond, Virginia. They were just terrific shows and very fun. So this video, that video we posted, Eric. Uh, I had him go out. I was like, just go do like one of those videos on your phone. Like this, you know, this, make this line. I was like, just so we can post something to be like, thanks for coming out, you know. And he yeah. did it and he said it got, he came back and was like, oh, it was very uncomfortable for him. Because <laughs> he was like walking to the line and everybody kept looking at him. Yeah. And then I think someone that was kind of crazy on the street uh, then started yelling at him and uh, chased him. For filming him? No, <laughs> yeah, not for Richmond's, filming him, just. just Richmond's wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Richmond was. Uh, the theater there is beautiful. And, uh, I mean, the shows were, I mean, we did four o'clock and a seven, four o'clock Sunday was awesome. Mm. I mean, awesome. And four, four o'clocks are always like, they're good. I mean, people like them, but like sometimes that you can feel the energy be a little bit lower just cause it's four o'clock and it's, you know, it's not your typical kind of, but they were, I mean, out of the gate, they were like, wow, this is, they were so great. Uh, Greenville was crazy. That's a big arena. And then Jacksonville as well. I mean, they were all great. Just super fun. Um, I love a daytime show. I wish I could do 12 PM PM comedy and then have the rest of the day. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot for people to get yeah. there. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like, I don't mind a four o'clock shows, but I, ideally you just want it to be a seven o'clock show, but we, it's, it just depends on the place. Greenville. I mean, look at, it was so many people do. Wow, How many awesome. is that? Uh, seven thousand something like that uh yeah it was just uh yeah it's crazy man. it was crazy and look like ghosts <laughs> yeah they were uh we sold those tickets twice yeah. One to the, <laughs> yeah. yeah we had the ghosts sitting there and uh just real people uh yeah they were just so good i like uh i had a good i walked down that tunnel right there on the bottom Oh, so that was oh, kind yeah. of fun, like a real WWE. Type yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. Royal Rumble. Yeah. yeah, you get to walk down there and uh, get some fives along the way. No, no, you were blocked off. Oh, okay. Uh, I did when I walked out of the tunnel because yeah. they were they could uh, people could when you white they see you like right when you walk by. So I, I did a couple like you know waving at people and I walked out. Uh, very, very, very nice people. I'm excited. I feel good about the hour. Had some new. Had some. Had some good stuff. Going to Zany's tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, this comes out Wednesday. So Are you doing new material night? Yeah, yeah. Nice. It was like one of those where you, I was like, I liked some stuff, and then you're like, I need to go do it. I need to go say it. Yeah, yeah. you know. And I'm, you know, even though I'm tired, like we we don't go out till Friday, and so I was like, I need to go. I just need to get. I need to say it again, and like, you know, kind of feel it, like feel it like on a shorter set stuff, stuff kind of stand alone. Let me just see where these jokes are mm -hmm. really at. Uh, met Trevor Lawrence. Met Trevor Lawrence. What a wonderful person. Really? Oh, yeah. He's a nice I mean, guy. I love Trevor oh, Lawrence. Oh, man. Big just fan. The, just are him I am. His, yeah. Him and his uh, uh, wife, they've been together. They've known each other since they were five. Wow. <laughs> He's just, I mean, he dude, we hung out for probably two hours after the show. He just met everybody, goes up and says, hey, how you doing? I'm Trevor. Like, Meets everybody. Just a wonderful, wonderful, really wonderful person. Like you, I, you root for him. I told the Jacksonville Cowd at the second night after we met him, uh, I told him, I go, I was met 
Tre- your boy Trevor Lawrence last night, and everybody cheered. And I was like, it's crazy. He was like talking to me, and he was like, he goes, I just don't like this city, man. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he goes, I just want, I like Tennessee a lot. And I was like, dude, I, I hear you, man. Yeah. Uh, and then it was very, they all started laughing. And then they chanted Duval. That's what they chanted. Duval. It's yeah. their county. Yeah. I did not know that. Sounded like <laughs> booing. I assumed it wasn't booing. I assumed it was something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Weird to chant the county, though, because yeah. you, know, you know they don't always just display the county as you're rolling into a place. No, no. I'm a big county fan. Yeah, yeah. I, I just did a show in Ponte Vedra, Ponte Vedra, outside of Jacksonville, and they had a big sign in the green room that said, "Don't worry, they're not booing you. They're just yelling." And it was like a whole oh. you know, explanation of that. Yeah. So. I would not have known that going in. Yeah, yeah, I did not know that. And then we saw uh, Derek Trucks and Susan Tedeschi, our, uh, me and Laura's old friends, and uh, it was very fun to get to hang out with them and uh, get to see them. And, yeah, it was a fun, you know, those are all just uh, just good dudes. Yeah. It was a very normal hang. Like, it was a lot of golfers, too. Like, Augustine was down there. So then uh, uh, he had some golfing buddies come, and uh, I played Sawgrass. Where I texted Jason Day a picture of him when he won at the players, and then he won. I texted him Thursday, and because I was in, because they have pictures of the winners, and they showed him and his daughter, who was, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, who was a baby or she was two or something, and that's when he won there. And then, uh, and then look at this, and then he goes that's and wins awesome. this weekend. That's awesome. I mean, I had as much to do with it as he did. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way. <laughs> There's no way I'm not that involved in his win. He's worked very, very hard to get back to that point. Yeah. He's got a PGA Championship coming up this week. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, Big time, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Met some uh, – I I forgot the uh, – I I got two drawings from some kids. That was very sweet drawings, and uh, I let they're on the bus. And then I, I also met some guys in Jacksonville. One guy gave me a challenge coin, and I'll, 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 it's on the bus, and I'll bring it back in. It's the guy. I didn't really get to talk to the guy. Uh, he gave it to me. Such a cool challenge coin. And then, well, what do uh, you mean a challenge coin? He tra- we fought, and it's like he those gives coins you the right coin there. And then yeah, he's yeah. Challenging they, you no, to fight it's him? like a, it's the military. They give the challenge coins. So the the thing behind it, what it used to mean was or i mean it still means this i think it's a token of appreciation to now and like so people handle them out as that so when we, i did uso tours you'd get a bunch of coins and okay uh but uh th- it's what you would do it is you would if you were in the service and you had the coin in and you were getting a you know you're at the bar getting a beer and then you put your coin out well if the other guy doesn't have his coin then you then he has to buy the round Oh, okay. But if he has his coin, I think then you have to buy the round. And so it's a challenge, like, to see, are you, you have your coin on you or not? Oh, all right. And if someone pulls it out. And that's, like, the, I think, the history behind it. And then now it's, like, uh, I think it's, maybe it's still that, but it's also just a, I think it's a, a appreciation or, like, a, it's a very nice thing. To so it's an honor given. to be given one. Yeah. By somebody. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yes, and it was very tough it was, to challenge it, people if they don't know what it is, though. Like if someone yeah. put it out of the bar, I'd be like, "Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What is that?" Yeah, he like, shotgunned a beer right in front of me, and I go, uh, and I had to buy it. I go, what? <laughs> he had the concession guy standing right next to him with that big tub. You're like, beers. he's the one with the big I go, coin. I, 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 all right, and then, but it was he gave me one, and I also got a hat uh, from a guy in. Uh, Maybe the Navy, I think the Navy, I got to see, I get on the, I'll, I'll wear it one day. Uh, I, all this I left on the bus. I get off the bus, I forget everything. Yeah. But it was uh, very cool, cool stuff uh, this weekend. Yeah, it was fun. Good deal. Had a good time. All right. What'd y'all do? Nothing. Well, Dusty had a big weekend. Well, yeah, oh, I yeah. Filmed, uh, filmed a one-hour uh, comedy special. Wow. Uh, sold out both shows. They That's did awesome. sell out uh, yeah. at the Bijou in yeah. uh, Knoxville, and it was great. Yeah. I mean, I did the first hour, and I was like, that's so good. Uh, I've got it. Mm-hmm. So the next show, I was very relaxed. I was relaxed the first one. I wasn't nervous at all about this. It just felt good. I yeah. was surrounded by good people. The audience was were hot. And then, uh, but the second show, I mean, I did the same jokes and did like 15 minutes more time. Really? I don't know how that, but I slowed down. I yeah. did extra parts to jokes. I got into it. 
had a little guy that kept yelling out, but I was able to make it funny every time. And it yeah. was great. Yeah. Yeah. When you say a little guy. I don't know how big he was, but I just mean he was yelling out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I called him little, uh, but I don't know the size of him at all. Okay. And based on the yell, I would say he was not that small. All right. Yeah. What you think you're show it? I would like to kind of keep that first yell that he yeah. did. Because I think that was a fun moment. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, now, no yee yees, but I'm going to get the yee yee joke going for the next set. <laughs> I already had too many jokes in this one. So, oh, that's good. So, so I'm, yeah, uh, we're going to be all out. People are going to expect jokes. to see the yee yee stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. We're all out yee yee next. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sick of those jokes. I mean, I've been telling them a long time and I like them, but I prepping for this, I got real sick of those jokes. Yeah. But it felt good. I mean, when you're up there, you're like, this is the last time I have to tell these jokes. I can still tell them if I want, but it's the last time I have to tell yeah. them. Yeah. And it feels good. Mm -hmm. That is a wonderful feeling. Yeah. When you know I don't have to. Because then you get there. The, you always have some stuff that you're just going to like. Yeah, I like doing this more than that. And that's what I try to look at. You try to this like my hour now. It's like I'm trying to be like putting the pressure on it to be like, all right, what do I, like, I should be able to get into everything and be like, I can't wait to say this. It might be impossible just because you get them all together at different times. So, you know, this stuff I was like in, we had some new stuff I talked about in Richmond and the, I did it up at the beginning and I just liked the way I worded it all. And it was like, and it's new and it's, I'm trying to figure it out. So it's very exciting. So once I figure it out though, I mean, eventually that's, you're going to get like, tired of, you know you'd be like oh, i'm kind of tired of it mm -hmm. but yeah especially when you're then you're like wanting to record it so now you're like mm -hmm. at, at a show it's like it could still be loose but at the recording you're like i want this to be tight i want it to mm -hmm. be very precise what i'm saying at least that's how i approach it mm -hmm. and so you know you as you're working on it you're like doing it over and over again and you're like i'm pretty sick of this but when it came show time i was i took two days off i didn't think about comedy at all and so when i got out there it was you know it was fun to say it yeah. Because you also have been working these jokes where it's like, it's, it's a pretty good chance this joke's about to work. So you get to roll into a joke with confidence. Yeah. And Knoxville was fun. I like Knoxville a lot. Uh, the people that came out was great. I had people from my high school come uh, up to see me. Is them up front there? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but I'll give them a shout. I know they listen to the podcast. Okay. Kyle Hester. Um, and, um, oh gosh. Uh, Angel <laughs> Angela Vinofero. They both came. I went to high school mm -hmm. with them. It was great. Oh, great nice. to see them. They came to hang out with me after. It was awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just great. I mean, Knoxville was fun. The night before, I was just sitting at the hotel with with my opener, Alec Parent, and we were having some little cigars. And uh, this girl, this lady is hanging out out there, and she seems, a, you know, a bit off. But she <laughs> seems like a nice – she's drinking tall boys by herself. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, can I come sit with you guys? And we were like, yeah. And then she comes over and she sits like in between. We're sitting side by side on a park bench and she like wedges her way in between oh, us gosh. and then starts wanting to tell stories. And it's like, she wants to, she, we go, she goes, it's a long story. And I was like, well, we got time, you know, but we're being real <laughs> jokey. You know, she's like, oh, you're going to let me tell my story. And I'm like, as long as we can interject our jokes and uh -huh. commentary, you can tell it. Yeah. But then she would get into it and she'd get real emotional. And then she would just like freeze up. Like it would seem like she was about to cry, but then her hands would like, and her feet would lift off the ground and she would just like freeze, like for a long, <laughs> uncomfortable amount of time. Like at one point she was like, I'm going to write a book. And we were like joking with her, like, why don't you do a one woman show? You know? And then she freezes up for like the fourth time. And I'm like, well, maybe the book is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. written word is your... But then I saw Mike Kaplan was doing a show in town and we had time. So I thought, well, let's walk down and see Mike Kaplan. And I don't know him, but I thought it'd be fun to see the show. And she was like, well, I'll walk with you. Oh, and I was like, well, have you ever been to a comedy show? She said, no. And I go, well, if you get kicked out, you're on your own. And then so we're walking and she keeps trying to like, hold. she goes, I know you're married, but let me hold your arm. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hold Alec's arm. And Alec was nice enough to let her do that. And then we get to the venue. We finally find it. And then I realize I'm like an off a week on the date. There's no show at all. So oh, now we've yeah. just strolled around the city with this lady. Yeah. And then eventually she, I go into a store and she walks off and leaves Alec. And we just, we were free. I mean, yeah. we thought we'd never be free. And yeah. then suddenly we were. 
We yeah, saw her enough. later at the hotel, so we know she made it back. Yeah. But was this woman barefoot? That's how I'm picturing her. She had slip on shoes and very often she would slip them off and be barefoot. Mm -hmm. She told us she lived in the woods in a in a house in in uh, Pennsylvania, in the <laughs> middle of Pennsylvania. Her name was she was going by Tam. And it seems like someone you'd love. No, I love talking. To, listen, I I mean, I always find myself talking to the weirdest people yeah. and I love it. I yeah. mean, I am all about it. But at some point, it's like sometimes you can't get away. And you're like, this has been a fun time, but now I'm ready to like. I'm ready to wrap it ready up. To, yeah, I'm ready to break away. <laughs> get back into some normal conversation here. Tam is a good name. It is. Mm -hmm. But it was fun, though. I mean, you know, I, I liked it. But yeah, she kept like, one time she grabbed my arm. And then about the time some guy was walking by, he goes, what's up, Dusty? And I'm like, oh, that's all I need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah. Went to high school with Hannah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they read on the internet last night that Dusty uh, is out with a strange lady. <laughs> yeah. It's a Kramer when he says, yeah. read on the internet that Banya killed. <laughs> Yeah, but she also was like, apparently her card stopped working at the hotel. And so the front desk guy was like this 21-year-old dude, and he just kept giving her beers out of the cooler. And I'm like, I don't think this is the way to go. I mean, I don't. Where was it? What hotel were you in that they had beers in a cooler? Well, you know, like, well, not like a cool, oh. like, you know, like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Like, like a the, stand the, the kiosk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. It wasn't like. She's <laughs> yeah. paying for them. Igloo, styrofoam yeah, I think cooler. it's being charged to the room, but they were saying her card wasn't working. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Or her credit card wasn't Yeah, they were like, we know she's got money, but her card's not working. I'm like, well, how do you know she has money? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like she's borderline if homeless. my <laughs> card's not working, that that's not a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how are they going to get. Yeah, I mean, the room paid for. I don't know. What was she wearing? Uh, well, she, you know, she was dressed normal, but she had yeah. slip on shoes. Yeah, okay. and she, like a dress, like she thinks yeah. she's part of a wedding. Or She, she went, said she was down because her daughter just graduated um, from law school. Yeah. And then she told me she was a widow. But when she got into the story, uh, it, she was divorced. And the guy that she, I guess, loved died, but they were never married. And the story was just like, she wanted to tell it, but then she would get like real emotional and it yeah. would just take her so. And I was like, we don't have to talk about this. Yeah. This is your idea. Yeah. And well, no, nobody's ever given her the opportunity. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Her whole life, nobody's been like, you have the floor for the next few <laughs> hours. So just go ahead. And I, yeah, I had quite a bit of a cigar and I was trying to save my voice. I was like, I have time. Mm -hmm. I can sit and listen. <laughs> yeah. But mm -hmm. I was like, you got to be, you can't be freezing up like this. <laughs> But it was only during the story. Once she yeah. wasn't telling that story, she wasn't freezing up. If she would have nailed would almost, the story, would you have given her time on your show? Yeah, I would have. <laughs> I would have fired Alec and had her <laughs> open the show. Mm. Mm. That's fun. That's good stuff. Yeah. I was in Denver, Colorado. Comedy Works, just great club. Oh, yeah. Perfect weekend. Uh, all the shows were great. They gave me a headlining date there. All right, Comedy Works, the big deal. August sixth. Right. Yeah, the downtown clubs. I'm pumped about that. That is a awesome. big deal. That great club. Big deal. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. I was in San Diego. First time ever in San oh, Diego. Yeah. Mike Drop Comedy Club. Great shows. Met a lot of nice folks. Went to the San Diego Zoo. Yeah. Did some research on the animals. Oh, yeah. One of the nicest zoos anywhere. Yeah. And it was great. Yeah. What kind of weird animals did you see? I mean, I saw some animals. I didn't even know what they were. Um, but it's funny. All these animals are so big and ferocious when you see them. That you, everyone, I'm like, well, I think, I mean, I walk in, I'm like, I think this cockatoo could take the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then you just see them and more and more. I tell you what, though, I saw a polar bear and I saw a tiger. That polar bear was so big. Yeah, they're yeah. huge, right? And the tiger, maybe he's just not eating well these days. He was smaller than I expected. You know, half yeah. of them, more than half, most of them were asleep yeah. anyway. So you're just looking at them laying there. But uh, the polar bear was huge. That's my problem with the zoo. I'm like, wake up, you know, people are here. <laughs> Well, they yeah, that's do. your problem with the yeah. zoo. The animals aren't working hard enough. <laughs> Come <for> on, but <laughs> well, they sleep during the day. Yeah, yeah. that's why night zoo is great. Yeah, oh yeah. If you go when I did, you know, when I went to Singapore, mm -hmm. they had a night zoo, and it's okay. the best zoo I've ever been to. And they're I, so and they're so active and so loud, and it's like kind of scary because you just hear roars every. I mean, it's wild. It's their uh, time. Yeah. It's their right. time. I had a run in this weekend at the Rocky Mountain National Park with a wild turkey. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It was just kind of sitting on the trail, and I kind of just gave it some space. It made me rethink the whole baboon versus the turkey thing because it was it's pretty scary when it gets going. Yeah, you know, and it's 
bobbing its head yeah. at you and, it, and yeah. it's got big talons and claws. I think it made you rethink it until you run into a baboon on the trail. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> and then you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If I had to run in with Would a baboon, you, yeah. I would have led with that on the podcast yeah, today yeah. <laughs> and not just remembered it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be, that's like a dude walking up, you <laughs> exactly. know. Well, baboons, I got as close as me and you to the baboons through some very thick glass. And yeah, I wouldn't want to mess with them either. They're, yeah. They're uh-huh. all pretty, pretty intimidating. And they work out. When uh, the, uh, so, someone posted that cassowary video. Uh, the ca- the cassowary. Because that's uh, some kids talk about the cassowary. The cassowary, I'm telling you what. We got a couple of cassowary comments. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't even know this we're, animal we're existed, but I'm convinced it's I'm, pretty ferocious. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Uh, it's it's moving up. Hey, cassowary. <laughs> so, <laughs> that doesn't flow as good as hey bear. No. But, uh, let's start with some of you guys' comments. Uh, first up, uh, Joey Duggan. Brian seems like he'd throw a knuckleball, possibly not on purpose. Well, that's true. He's talking about my first pitch, the sounds game, I assume. And yeah, there's a good chance that there won't be a lot of rotation on it. Yeah. Well, uh, when you're so good, sometimes you throw a knuckleball and when you don't even intend to. What if I tell you, though, that I have some news and I didn't mean it to be this? I already know what it is. Oh. I've already told it at my show this weekend oh. and somebody booed. Yeah. <laughs> what's the what's the news? I am throwing the first pitch out the week before Brian. <laughs> <laughs> i was not happy about that. may 27th so it's more than i a don't week. mean it is it more than a week mine's july 4th so yeah oh okay. oh so it's way different you have the bigger day you have memorial day weekend that's pretty good that's not july 4th no it's you not have july 4th i honestly i never in a million years would have done this I, I just wouldn't have done it. But you did do it. Because we're going there <laughs> okay. with Harper's softball team. Oh, okay. That's the only reason. Okay. And it was like, you know, I'm doing it to impress my own daughter. Right. So I, that's why I'm doing it. Well, but now we, you guys can do pitch and practice together. Yeah. I'll give you a lay of the land of how it goes. Abby, you have the bigger date. Aaron texted me the day before mm. about it. And then you, and then Abby texted me the next day. Said, "Hey, give me that contact." And I was like, "Why?" And she said, "Nate wants to throw out the first pitch July 4th. Oh, and I said, yeah. "The same day as me." <laughs> yeah. And then later on, I texted and I said, "Is he really?" And she said, "Well, yeah, he's doing it May 27th." Yeah. And then that night at my show, somebody asked, "Hey, you've been warming up for you know from stage?" And I said, "Yeah, get this. Nate's throwing out the first pitch May 27th." And somebody in the back goes, "Boo!" <laughs> yeah. And I said, "Yes. Does this guy not have enough attention? He has to steal my thunder." Oh, it's man. uh i don't know what to tell you <laughs> i don't want to do it i mean i do want to do it i, I mean i i, I want to i've never thrown a first pitch out i do want to do it it is and never in a million years take everything out of it i'm doing it because harper's team yeah. and i want to do it for that that that's so take there's zero ego in this it just you know i was even like do i want maybe i don't do it but it's like, you know, it's hard to get to a sound. Like, I don't know when I can get to one and we're yeah. going. And yeah. then you're like. Yeah, it sounds like a Nate Land takeover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it. We got. You I know, think they have got to get in on this. Yeah, I'll see. get in it in a couple but of years. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, we're all doing it. You years have on. the biggest. We we agree none of us do July 4th. I'll okay. need two years of practice. That's that's his. <laughs> that's July 4th is the big. That's the Bates Day. Yeah. It's the day America was founded. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly, right, Dusty? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows, really? <laughs> and it was the day <laughs> Brian Don't... Bates was founded on that mound. Yeah. They'll make the Triple A championship game seven. What if they ask you, you pitch so good, they ask you to join the team? What will you do? I mean, if it doesn't affect this, I'll consider it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> You would draw a line in the sand and say, I got to be able to do the podcast Absolutely. every Monday. They're dedicated. That's they, very nice. Well, I think they want That's to. Very sweet. He'll promote the games. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then he'll go and, you know. They'll pull you after an inning. You could throw <laughs> like, so slow. How you feeling? You're like, I'm tired. You could throw so slow that a batter would be like, I, I can't hit it. That happens some, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. They're like, this guy's <clears throat> throwing nothing but change ups yeah. out here. Yeah, it's an ephus, it's called. And sometimes when an infielder comes in and that's – they do that yeah and it throws them off doug bockler our friend who's a big fan of the podcast he's the pitching coach for toledo mud hens maybe i could get him to 
Because I'm guessing Sonny Gray will probably be training you. Uh, oh, to train? No, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'll. Who's, by the way, like true. the best pitcher in baseball yeah. this I know. season. He has Isn't the best ERA in baseball right now. Yeah, look at that. Sonny Gray, we got his, we got his uh, jersey hanging up. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's on, on the podcast. podcast. Okay. Yeah. He was, uh, I wanted him twins. over you, but uh, <laughs> he pitches for the Twins. Yeah, I mean. Sonny's the best. Uh, uh, Vandy, local, Nashville, Smyrna. Yeah, awesome. And he said if he throws a no-hitter, he'll say hello, folks, in the press conference. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think he'll remember. Did he <laughs> yeah. say that on the podcast? He did. Okay. But that's been a while. That's before Hay Bear was even a thing. Yeah. <laughs> we can maybe, maybe after podcast today, me and you go throw. Yeah. Just go throw it. We can warm up. Do you have gloves? Yep. I, I think I got one in my trunk. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you got. Oh, there you go. You think? You know, you put it in you there. Know, I, do, I, do. <laughs> I know exactly where it's yeah. at. I might have one under <laughs> my seat. It's brand new. Still got the tags on it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it under your golf clubs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heather Bauer. Regarding Mr. Belding doing stand up, maybe breakfast needs to be in control of the computer and searching again. Oh, look at this. Why is that? What we got Mr. Belden doing stand-up at Flappers Comedy Club. Oh, I've yeah. been to Flappers. Nate was right. All right. But I don't All know. All right. Thank but you, But he's, Heather. like, older here. Like, has he yeah, always yeah. been a comic? Or he no, do no, it no, after, no. Say, I'm talking about now. Okay. Like, no. But I'm talking about this. I didn't know this. This is not on his Wikipedia page. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at Wikipedia, you know? Uh, Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about, but <laughs> he got a jacket that matches his shirt. Yeah. Uh. You think he's doing Saved by the Bell jokes? Yeah, he <laughs> looks good, to be honest. Yeah, he does look good. He looks yeah. happy. Yeah, he's yeah. in his 70s, so that's... Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Derek Cochran. My nephew represented Dusty at his high school graduation. Oh, that's oh cool. yeah, look I saw that this, this morning. Look at this. Look at that. Huh? On the We're graduation cap. Um, wow. That's what I'm talking about. That. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wish Dusty believed in that education. <laughs> well, that's true. I High mean, school. it's a good time because he's graduating. Is uh, yellow for something? Like, is he something? If you have a sash like that, yeah, that means something. Maybe he's National Honor Society. Ooh. Maybe yeah, I mean, the, graduating I got with smart honors. fans. Don't that's, I mean, that's I mean, a super smart fan. Yeah. He's got, like, a special thing. Is And that other person's hat is white. They might not even graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've given up. That's they might. Surrender. That's like, they're like, we'll let you sit out there, but you're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. And then they go, we'll put a white hat on you. That's what I did in college. What? To where I didn't graduate on time technically because I failed a class my senior year. Yeah. So I walked out there and they gave me the diploma. There's there's a fake. There's nothing in it. I feel uh, like a real fraud doing that. And know? then and you what you're like, I want to just go back and get it. I had I finished two credits short, so I had to go back to summer school. But they were like, You're gonna walk with your class. But you walk up and you shake their hand and they hand you the booklet and you open it up and there's just nothing inside of it. Yeah. That's kind of Notre Dame education I like. Yeah. You know what? I like to see it. You're like, I'm sure ah, I failed. That happens uh, probably constantly, right? Like, a bunch. Of, yeah, there are yeah. A few of my friends went through the same thing. You didn't want to walk with the summer graduates? No. I don't even think they have a ceremony for the I summer yeah. graduates. I could have walked technically the next year. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, What'd fake. you fake? I would have yelled fake. Logic. <laughs> fake. Oh, logic? A logic. Oh, oh man, I could have told you that. <laughs> it's the hardest class I've ever taken. Illogical? I it twice. I like, it twice. Like illogic? Logic. What's Formal it? logic was the name of the class. So it's, what's the logic? It, it, it's almost like math. That's like, the only class I would have passed. If A is B, then it's all written out like Why'd math Why'd you take equation. that? Because it was a, a, I needed it to get a degree in philosophy. It was like one of the main requirements. So you have a degree in philosophy? I have a minor in philosophy because I failed that class twice. What's the major? I'm A major would have been like an actual I know, degree. but what is your major? Marketing. Oh, that's like a weak major, <laughs> isn't it? You think that's weaker than a philosophy? But you're good at well, marketing. Well, I mean, philosophy though. feels like. off. Yeah, but marketing. Say so this is what formal logic is. It looks like this. It's all just equations like this that you have to solve. And I was so bad. Yeah, what's the point of it? What's the logic behind it? That's what I should have asked them. Yeah. What's the logic behind this class? Yeah. Logically, I don't see how this would help me in anything. For philosophy? Yeah. What would that show you? What well, would they talk about? It's just it's how arguments are structured and how... Mm -hmm. uh, the great philosophers were great mathematicians, weren't That's they? That's crazy. A lot of them were, yeah. But who would go... All right, P, P, dash, Q, underline Q. Like, I mean, that's got an R and a triangle. Like, what does that, what does the R mean? 
these are variables, so they can mean whatever. So you can plug in statements for these, you know, so for any of these variables. Uh, the triangle means delta. It's it's the change, you know. So it's saying so R. The give me like R is like. So let's say A is Dusty has a dog. Yeah. B is the dog is is brown. Yeah. So it's C would B be does not follow A because that you know they're not related at all. I mean that was is, a horrific is, example, yeah. but that that's the kind of stuff you plug in statements like that, and then and then and then but when do you <laughs> show this? Are you just talking R B C? Like I mean, what do you? I, <laughs> what do you it, mean? It's just. <laughs> Yeah. Here's, to me it feels this is what I always this is what I feel I feel it is This is a if lot. If you played it if you explain this dumb it it would make sense. But then they go, "Well, we're going to add some." They make it super hard by putting it a was triangle. It's so hard. And yeah. I, and I got, and I passed every other requirement to get a philosophy degree except this. So it's like I clearly didn't need So that you didn't go get, back and pass this? No, I failed it twice. And I was like wow. and, so I had to take a uh, classes over the summer and i just took other classes did you take a foreign language i, I gave up no I how didn't many take people in your classes were failing this uh not many oh, okay mm. I, I didn't go to this class very what often. letter were you of the class were you like the c of the <laughs> class and then the r and the b were like yeah we gotta <laughs> deal with this r and b equals graduates yeah and c i was equals, the z yeah yeah you were the z, <laughs> z is uh, so it's they were like bad mathing you. In Let me this see code. that example of form logic. Premise: All spiders have eight legs. Black widows are a type of spider. Conclusion: Black widows have eight legs. You see that? Yeah, well, that makes sense. See how that works? So it's yeah. like just showing you like the logical thing that you would take from that. Yeah, but statement right, and just breaking it down to the math of that, so that you can. Plug Why would it in. you need math of it? So you can plug it in where? What are you plugging it in for? What do you mean? I don't know what the. Like, all right, that's formal logic. If yeah. you told me that's the example of formal logic, yes, that's the example of formal logic. I don't know what. What would that equation be? So all spiders have eight legs. Yeah, is y okay? And again, remember, I failed this class. So You're I'm making. Gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not the best. Oh, defender I can't wait of for it. the comment. You're and the get and the y. Here. The, the y is just a letter you're making up. Yeah, those are just very. It could be just like in math. It could yeah. be. It could be anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The logic majors are going to so come So all you. spiders have eight legs is Y. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then B is black widows are a type of spider. So Y, B. And then C is black widows have eight legs. No, that's not that's not how you would do it. But you got the, you got the YB, idea and then of it. The answer would be YB. I, it I is funny remember. we're trying to learn this from a guy that failed it twice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm maybe the only guy in the whole school that failed this class twice. So mm. I don't know exactly. <laughs> and you're like, And we're like, how do you do it, though? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. stuff. That's the stuff though. I don't understand is like, if it's example, formal logic is explained in this like very simple way. Why does it get so complicated? This is the type of class I'd like to take. Now, when I was that age, college age, I would have hated it, but now I would like to take this. I'm well, not going to, but I would like, but to. I remember thinking this is what I'm taking philosophy to not do classes like this. That's just math, mm -hmm. you know? But I know that's what I mean. Like, if you do philosophy, what is what job would you have if you were philosophy major? I don't know. I could have gone to law school, teach philosophy. I could have for taught like, philosophy. It's like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you'd go to law school. You go to like, law school for philosophy. debate. And yeah, I could have gone to. So philosophy is like learning how to debate. Or no, no, it's we. we right. did, well, you remember we did a whole episode on philosophy. It's, I don't remember much. But it's, but what? But, all right. But then, why would law school benefit, for, or why would a philosophy degree benefit you as a lawyer? Oh yeah, because yeah, it's because a lot of it is how arguments are structured, and yeah, that's why so I, yeah, so there's a little bit of a parallel there. Okay, you're right. Well, the reason I asked about foreign language is maybe you should have done Babel. Oh boy. Well, who needs to take a foreign language class in college when you have Babel? It's my go-to travel hack. Whether you're a seasoned traveler like myself or you're going on your first adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. It's the language learning app that sold more than 10 million what? subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's easy bite-sized language lessons, 
there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I've told y'all I'm going to Brazil in October, then Argentina. I got to brush up on my Portuguese, you know, dabble in a little Spanish so I can talk to some people down there. It's very exciting. You only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Think about that. Wow. Three weeks from now, you can be talking to people in a different language. Spanish, French, Italian, German, whatever you'd like. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Nate. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash Nate for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. <laughs> All right. That's fun. Those are Eric, good pauses. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Eric Black, my brother. <laughs> my brother and his ex-wife used to work at the Birmingham Zoo. The zoo had designated employees, had designated employees trained to use firearm firearms in an emergency situation should any of the dangerous animals escape while people were at the zoo. There were only a few animals that were listed as shoot on sight, like the obvious bears, lions. But one of the list was the cassowary. Its claws looked like they came straight from a velociraptor in Jurassic Park. Thought this would be relevant to the animal fights. Wow. Interesting that they say that and then they say that they think dinosaurs evolved into birds. Maybe all along we just been finding cassowary bones. <laughs> every one of those yeah. dinosaur bones is a cassowary? Well, <laughs> well, every one of the bones is a cassowary. The feet are gnarly. They got. The, yeah. They do look like dinosaur they're like, footprints. They're like, oh yeah, it's a dinosaur, but the dinosaur evolved into a bird. And they're like, well, maybe it was just always a bird. Well, someone the video. You don't have the video of what of the Irwin's son. Uh, someone I thought I saw that. Oh, on Tonight yeah. Show. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Do they have a cassowary. It was on uh, uh, Letterman. It's on the Nate Land podcast, I think. Okay. Like is like reposted. Or something. Maybe I do. I, I don't. I think the people in this video don't know what chases mean. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I think they're just trying to get some views. Uh, and it's a little working. disappointing. But if yeah. you see Instagram and go to like the Nate Land podcast, you know, uh, yeah. he talked about how mean they are. Yeah. Oh, this thing. Yeah, it does kind of charge at you, and it's got no arms. You know, obviously it's a bird, so it looks a little odd when it lunges at you. This but one's all what basically what the, what the kid what he says is their legs are strong enough to take down a lion. They can kill a lion, so they don't really? need a gun. Yeah. Oh, that was the emu. But that was the emu. Do they live in the same same area as a lion? Yeah, it's near. So this they can get to each other. I think I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that I have no on a boat zero idea if they do or not. But yeah, they live. Yeah, the cassowary is going to be. It's going to be tough to beat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be. I like it a lot. Is it going to fight this leopard, or are they just kind of showing it back and forth? Yeah, so I'm a victim to a lot of clickbait YouTube titles <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. This yeah, is Cassowary it's... fights leopard. It's not happening. Oh, that looks like uh, a dead Cassowary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, he's got fur in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. We don't know if that's a Cassowary. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know what's going on. But what's between giant, fact and fiction, the thing says it's it's between fact and fiction. Mm. Uh. A cassowary is it's the real deal. I mean, they don't they're they're definitely not big, but their legs are crazy. And they're I think they're just they're relentless. Gas. Yeah, I, I mean know. you gotta realize so, like the idea that they're uh I've been chased by a goose before. I mean, birds mm -hmm. can get wild. I mean, and they can goose are really mean. This one's doing this a, one's trying to break a into a car. It's it's I think it's looking at its uh reflection. Yeah. And so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, the, you got to think mentality of like wanting to fight, and cassowaries like feel like they want to fight. So that mentality goes a long way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a within a fight. Like you know, I, I I picture like this is like a tiger and a polar bear. A tiger feels like it wants to fight, and a polar bear doesn't. So that that mm. plays a lot into it. So if something could be big, and like if they have to fight, they're going to fight. But like that's why a grizzly bear will beat a polar bear. That's when they have fought. Because they're just so much more aggressive. Okay. That they're going to, the polar bear is bigger, but the mindset of the polar bear doesn't want to fight. Its whole body is white, so it blends into the snow. It wants to be left alone. And grizzly bears are like, I want to get 
Yeah. I don't want to get after you. You don't think there's any camouflage involved with a grizzly bear in its color? You just don't think about them like a polar bear. Yeah, there is, I guess, brown. But I mean, yeah. polar bear is literally like, I'm going to go live in the area that's <laughs> only... Polar bears cover up their nose so their prey can't see them. That's how yeah, smart they they're are. They're scared. Oh, yeah. okay. They cover them up because they, they hear a helicopter and they go, <laughs> you know, airplane flying over and they... <laughs> <laughs> Until they talk with their nose covered. Uh, JS, the Nashville Zoo has a cassowary. I think we need the four of you to go check it out in person and teach us more about that insane bird. We should go down to the Nashville Zoo. I think and we're do that. taking uh, Eleanor for the first time, either later this week or next week. Yeah, so. I'm probably going to go right before that. Uh, <laughs> right before we get there <laughs> right before you get there i'm gonna take eleanor to it oh, yeah. Uh, yeah i'm gonna go get her and take her and then as you get there i'm gonna hand her and go i just showed her everything. yeah you're like i just did this for my daughter yeah <laughs> no for eleanor oh, for, you just did for, it for, your, daughter. Daughter. Yeah. for your daughter yeah. uh yeah yeah go see the cassowary i'll report back uh ian rice writing to you from maine Home of the University of Maine Black Bears and where our state animal is the moose. I have to take issue with Aaron's assertion, right? Yeah. Assertion that black bears and moose live in two different parts of the country, so this doesn't happen. I assure you, they do coexist. Yeah, a lot of people uh, said something about that to me. And you know what? I feel like I've matured on this podcast over the last few years, and part of maturing is admitting you were wrong. You were wrong. And I was wrong about that. It's a big thing. People just want to hear that out of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time I've done that on this podcast? <clears throat> Probably. I thought about lawyering my way out of that, but I said, you know what? Yeah. I'm man enough now to. You admit. are the grizzly bear of this podcast. <laughs> Aggressive. <laughs> yeah. And a lot's really happening yeah. to you on this podcast today. What do you I mean? mean? Well, you, you're having trouble with the Google. People have been uh, coming at you about that. your. Oh, your yeah. Uh, yeah. And, well, he you know, failed. Can't be a philosopher. Minor in philosophy. Yeah. How is that embarrassing to have a minor in philosophy? When you are going, when you go for a major and you know everybody knows you went for that major <laughs> and then it has to be a minor. Like, when do you flip it? Were you going to have two majors? I was a double major until the last day. Yeah. Yeah. So the very last day. And then it was a major. Well, minor. that feels good. Yeah. You're like, you know what? Who needs two majors, really? Right. You know I, I, mean? I was overextending myself the <laughs> yeah, whole time. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. look at all these other people with just one. <laughs> yeah. I was shooting for two. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's, were you the first uh, Weber to get two majors? No, my brother double majored there, and my sister did actually. Oh, so maybe so I was the first to not. <laughs> not yeah. 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 Wow. The opposite. Yeah. 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 You really let it. to your family. Really yeah. let your family. Know. At least you showed them becoming a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kyle Shields. I am always impressed by Nate's random knowledge of very specific things. For example, his understanding of the physics of a car moose accident is completely accurate and yet of no use entirely living in Tennessee. Growing up as a New England native, this was drilled into us new drivers, and Nate has done us proud. Thank you. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did first show I did up there. That was drilled into me. When you hear that there's a chance as you're driving through the night, you're not going to know what happens, but a moose body will land on your whole windshield. Mm-hmm. It sticks in there. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say that's useless. I mean, we've dri we drive all over the country, or at least have driven all over the country. So we need to know about moose mm -hmm. car accidents. I didn't know it. I've driven all over the place and didn't know I it. I mean, I've probably thought about it every single day since I've heard it. <laughs> every time you drive? I think about it. It pops up in my head, the visual of it, a lot. Uh -huh. I picture a big barrel-like body, and then you just, the legs give out, and then that just mm -hmm. falls through the windshield. Yeah. That's yeah. what I picture. That's what you have dreams about. You I don't have dreams up, of it. Wake I, up in no, a cold these are sweat. during the day. Oh, these are just, just I'm visions. walking around. I'm at Publix. I could be at Target and I'm just. That's almost like visions. I have visions of it. Yeah. Has anyone ever complimenting you on your understanding of physics before? No. You should have majored in physics. I should have. Yeah. At I least could have been. minored in it. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm already minored. Yeah. I think before I even got there and showed up, I'd be a minor. Yeah, where Aaron sees a black bear driving, he's like, well, I don't, at least I don't have to worry about any moose running out in front of me. Yeah. Well, laugh it up. Yeah. That was foolish, though, Aaron. That you should be ashamed of that. Foolish. Uh, <laughs> Christian Moscoso. Moscoso. Wow. I think that's right. I think yeah, that's I think right. So. Yeah. Uh, 
Christian Moscoso. Moscoso. <laughs> that's a good choice of names. I think that's a great name for that last name. Moscoco, Christian Moscoco. Yeah, yeah, I really do. I think they really go together. Uh, like if it was Joe Moscoso, you'd be like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, it's, it's a weird flow. This guy might uncle. be a Christian. So yeah. I don't know. Joe Moscoso rhymes. Yeah, this I'm actually, nice as I said, Joe. Too. I don't hate Joe. Yeah. Uh, Bill Moscoso. I don't even know if I. I don't even mind that. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to like find a name. Philip, Philip Moscoso. I don't know. That has a ring to it. Too. Yeah. Tom, I think the last name Thomas. is just great. Uh, it is a yeah, good is last a, name, yeah. Moscoso. Dusty Moscoso. <laughs> there you go. That's, <laughs> yeah. hard, that to, that's hard to pair together. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You're like, well, yeah. what's that about? Dennis Moscoso? Yeah. It's not bad either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need Dusty. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be Dusty or Christian. Baboons are a huge problem for farmers. So the way they deal with them is by catching one of them and painting it white. Then they release it, and as it runs back to its group, it scares them so they... It scares them, so they run away from it and keeps following them. So they keep running, et cetera. Right. Wow. That's uh, kind of hilarious. And that's. I Googled this, and apparently I'll, they do that for a lot of monkeys, not just baboons. And wildlife people says this does not work. Please stop painting the monkeys. But it's a thing that people in Africa do. Well, the wildlife they... people are not farmers, so they don't know. Yeah. That's true. That's true. We need to ask a farmer about this. Yeah. How do they paint it white? Just like spray paint? Mm, I don't know. Uh, or get it drunk. <laughs> yeah, passes out. They do white out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't imagine they have like a... Is there a special kind of fur paint? Because there's stuff like that for like uh, dogs and stuff. Mm. You've seen that. People paint their dogs. Really? Yeah. I bet they have something that just like... <laughs> Like explodes on the like an airbag type. Oh, okay. And Maybe they, they should bleach. And then the it's fur. like, oh no! Yeah. And then it runs back. Bleach the fur. Yeah, like M and M. But that is, or you, you know, in high school. I yeah. like the the, yeah. the 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 your comment on that. They're not farmers because that is true. Yeah, like that's like you want to go. You know, it's like, well, this village doesn't know what they're doing. You're like, this village has been doing this for maybe hundreds and thousands of years yeah, longer so than you've been aware of it they they might be like it worked yeah you know and then just someone in a building goes that doesn't work yeah it's worth trying if the baboons are destroying your farm yeah literally if you're you're like they're getting our vegetables yeah i mean even a rabbit one little cute rabbit can come into your yard and eat all the crops you've been growing just like that. <laughs> it could be like, oh, this rabbit's so cute. And then it just eats everything you've been working to grow. Did something happened to you. Yeah, what happened? Several times. <laughs> That's Rabbits, crazy. deer, groundhogs, they'll just eat everything you've been working to grow. It's like they don't care. They don't care. They don't have a <laughs> lot of feelings towards it. Yeah. It's all, and they don't even say, like, if the if the rabbit came up, tapped on the door and was like, hey, appreciate that, then it's acceptable. I think that's the difference between us and them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least it be appreciative. Mm -hmm. Don't just take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like be like a cat that brings a bird to your. Yeah. Right. You kind know, of offering. Yeah. Like yeah. that's like, I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't want it, but like, it's, yeah, it's very nice. You did bring a gift. You brought something. Yeah. yeah. You went out of your way. Yes. And did something. Right. And that's appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. It's all makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Paul Emmy Mueller. I'm surprised at Aaron's insistence. Golly. That the, <laughs> just attack yeah. Aaron day here. Well, Brian was in a mood putting these together. Yeah. I mean, I had so many to wade through. I just picked pick some of the best. <laughs> I'm surprised at Aaron's insistence that the elephant would not be aggressive. In ancient times, elephants were used in war. They would sometimes put armor on the elephants, get them drunk, and then have them charge into tightly packed enemy soldiers. Yeah, that's cool, but you're kind of uh, – exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. You, you say they're aggressive, they would be great in this fight because they were used and manipulated by human beings back yeah, in the day. Yeah, they got them drunk. Yeah, I'm talking about the opposite. I'm talking about something that can't be manipulated, can't be used by human beings, and is just a warrior out there. Now, people pointed out something I mentioned on this podcast previously, how an elephant trampled a woman – and then showed back up at her funeral and trampled her dead body again. Mm -hmm. Right. 
very aggressive. Yeah, so there's one particular elephant that had vengeance in its heart. Yeah. <laughs> so that, but that's a different argument, I think. Mm. He said this. Was, yeah, I don't know. They were used in war. He said this example was in the Bible in one Maccabees, and that you would know it. Oh no! Just because we have that book doesn't mean we read it. Mm. But uh, I that's didn't know that's not that really was in all of them. What do you mean? Well, Maccabees, is yeah. it? I don't it's, know. It's in the Catholic. It's in the apocryphal. It's in oh, the Catholic yeah. Bible, mm-hmm. in the original King James. You did your own Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, could you? Could I write my own Bible? You could. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's my a comedy. Take on there's it? a comedy Bible. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watch the comedy Bible. But I mean, take on the Bible. What would your What would your spin be? I don't think that's encouraged, but you can. Yeah. I think Thomas, one of them wrote that one. Maybe Thomas Jefferson. I don't know. One of, ben Franklin maybe wrote his own version of the Bible. Oh, wow. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he didn't. Maybe Thomas Edison. Yeah, he might have. <laughs> ben Franklin's version. I think he, I don't think he wrote it, but I think he like took some books out and was like, this is the Ben Franklin Bible. It was a little bit shorter. Yeah. Oh, I could do that. I could take some books yeah, out. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that is. Oh, you want to just write your own from scratch? Oh, I thought that's what they do. So the they just well, add I think books. The Catholic and take Bible, books. like Maccabees, is in some other stuff. But I think they're saying the Catholic Bible, Maccabees, is part of it. But like other Bibles, it's not in there. Yeah. Why would Why would not all the Bibles just have everything in? Because there's they have disagreements with each other about what should be in there. Yeah, I think some of the scripture, some people don't feel like it was doctrine or. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronald Mitchell the next animal fight bracket should include ants versus Dusty after he drinks several bottles of water <laughs> well I had a bet that I put out about peeing on ants Yeah, and uh, uh, I would win I mean every time that's <laughs> why the ant the whole podcast that we did versus ants I mean I would I would win the, I would beat the ants but it's two and a half million ants to one Nah, doesn't I, matter. You gotta drink a lot of water. Yeah, I mean, you gotta drink a lot of water. Yeah. What if you run out of ammunition, <laughs> and I don't even know oh. if that kills them. No, it doesn't kill them, but it it will slow them down. It messes and, up their day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it messes up their day, and they just go, "All right, just weather the storm for a second. Yeah. And I just then toy they with just... them for a while. You yeah, know? I mean, <laughs> I don't know how ants, long you pee. But... Start and stop that much. Mm-hmm. Ants, they got nothing on me. Yeah, two million of them. I'll take those out in a couple of hours. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Matt Pittman. Just finished listening to the Animal Fights episode and it reminded me of a debate me and my friends have been arguing f- about for years. In a fight to the death, would you rather take on one lion or 100 seagulls? I'd rather take on 100 seagulls. I'd rather take the seagulls. Too. No, I'd take the lion all day. Really? Seagulls are vicious and there's 100 of them. I don't think you're grasping how many that is. I think I just That's- saw a video of a seagull eating a pigeon. Just well, that was a pelican. Pelican, yeah. yes, it was. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm going seagulls then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be even. Uh, I know that they're. It's they can. I mean, the movie Birds, mm-hmm. the Alfred Hitchcock movie, which I've actually watched that the movie. Birds? The Birds. Uh, Tippy Hedrick. And I remember. Yeah. And so is that those seagulls? These right? are seagulls. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, there. It would be pretty wild. Do you get a weapon in this battle? No. And. So you just uh, got your you just got to fight them, and so it's. I mean, you could just you know, it's like you could you could grab the birds. I think the birds you could maybe get away, and you wouldn't have that much damage. Where a lion, like, I mean, you imagine it starts eating you, and you're still alive. Like it's, yeah, yeah I'm going seagulls. It, all it's just the lion is just so powerful that there's just a hundred of them, dude. They, I know they would you, just envelop you and just a if, big word. <laughs> They would just be around. I feel, like you needed, <laughs> I feel like you needed to use that word today because you've been attacked for your education. Yeah. See, that was like a kind yeah. of a clapback word to the audience to go. I, don't forget, I minored yeah. in philosophy. All right. I know we're we're all having fun here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a major and a minor for sure. Yeah, almost double major. Unlike my brother, so and close sister. to a double major. <laughs> yeah, my brother and sister, my family, most of my family is double majors. And I was close. I'm the rebel. Yeah. With only one. Your parents yeah. have a... Just... My mom does. My dad doesn't. But my dad has a master's. Yeah. I mean, so you're like the bottom. Like, do they talk to you pretty easy at home? <laughs> <laughs> they talk much slower. Yeah. They talk to me. Yeah, yeah. 
They say, Aaron, we love you, but we're disappointed. Right. Yeah, see, it's the opposite for me. I have two older sisters, and neither one of them graduated high school. I'm the first to graduate high school. Uh, so nice. wow. I'm, like, I'm yeah. like the scholar. Uh, yeah. yeah, how about it? It's cool, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I do not think. Uh, uh, I, I think I would do sequels, but I, I, Lion is just. I don't even know if you could ever. You could at least beat. Some, I'm just going off what I could beat. Mm -hmm. You could beat up seagulls. Yeah. A lion, you're really going to never... I mean, how are you going to kill a lion with your hands? I don't know. I But I think this is a lose-lose. I don't <clears> think the <throat> seagulls is going to be easy, dude. Yeah, I don't, I don't I don't think there's a correct answer that he uh -huh. goes lion. And you're like, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's no chance with the lion. So at least you're like, I don't know. These are just birds. Maybe I can do it. Mm -hmm. They would yeah. peck you... Is that how they would? Yeah, dude. Look at look yeah. At, they would just. I mean, they they basically beaks, be like man. little. The beaks are. Yeah, it's just like. I mean, they would just be pulling at your. It'd be getting pinched. Yeah, by a hundred. By a hundred, like in super fast, just. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. But I mean, they got to fly. And they're making noises, dude. Yeah, they're loud. It's a loud fight, dude. Yeah. It's. <laughs> Oh gosh! I mean, the insanity of like how annoying that flight would be. Yeah. But if I think if you can get one by the head, you can swing it around yeah. and it's a weapon. Now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then if you can get a couple, now you got a couple of weapons. Yeah. Interesting. Just flapping them around. Yeah. Ripping off beaks, using your you got your own little beaks now on your fingers. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, like, like they might start fighting each other. Yeah. There's a hundred of them. Like mm -hmm. they're going to get in there. They're going to. I mean. They're going to get trained. They're going to trample some of them on their own. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's like a lion's is like, yo, it's just me and you. But even if they all kill 10, there's still 90 of them. That, but that, that's something. Yeah. With a lion, he's just looking at you going, it's me and you. Mm. And you can, I mean, you could really like put the head of us like in your fingers like this with their neck and like slip it out. I think you could rip their head off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it could. Wheeler Garrett. The topic of who would win a fight between a moose versus bear became a heated argument for my friend group in high school and ended up leading to the biggest argument we ever had. My friend, my friend Sam Snyder claimed he could beat 12, 12 year olds in a fight. <laughs> half the friend group said this was ridiculous. The other half, not so much. We even went as far to ask our friend's 12-year-old brother to rally up 11 of his friends. It's been years, and we still fight over this sometimes. So they were... The topic of who'd win fight between Moose versus Bear became a heated argument for my friend's group. Oh, and led to the argument of that. Could you beat 12 12-year-olds 12 in a fight? Girls or boys? <laughs> I guess it's boys. It all saying. depends on how vicious you can be, right? If, you, if you're just playing, I think they take you. Yeah. But if you're like, if they're like, this is vicious, then you, you know, I think you could win. Mm hmm. This all well, of a sudden feels been, a lot more serious than yeah. the other ones. <laughs> well, the size of the 12 year old kids. I mean, some of these kids are. Well, that's big, true, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. that's just, you know. yeah. yeah. But they still don't have your, your mentality is just so different. Yeah. Like you're, you know, if you're older, you are, you're like, I'll do this to the death. And if you're 12, you're going to, be like, well, I don't want to get hurt. Yeah, you've never even thought There's about that. There's a point yeah, where like, you got, got a go. life to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You pop a couple of them quick, I think they're going to... And are know. these 12-year-olds neighborhood kids, or are they, you know, living out on the streets? I you think it's... I, mean? I think it, it, that's an argument that can go either ways. I do. I think he can beat up 12 12-year-olds. 12 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do know, and the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really going to be the... what's the, Who's the guy fighting? Yeah. What is your, you know... I'd have to see a 12-year-old. I don't know what a 12-year-old looks like. Harper's 10. Yeah. Harper, 12 Harper's going to take me. Yeah. Yeah. He's got two more years left. <laughs> and then she's really going to start running her mouth at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell us about electric e-bikes. If you're still Ooh. thinking about your mom this month, why not think outside of the box? Moms do a lot. Why not give her her very own electric e-bikes? Uh, yeah, uh, Laura rides our electric e bike. I'm a giant fan of these things, they're so fun. Uh, it's like riding 
you know, a motorcycle or a scooter, but it's a bike and you just pedal and you can, you can have it go with you. You don't even pedal at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a very easy thing to get around. If you live in a neighborhood, it's super fun to go around, but you can go take it on the trail. Uh, you can go, you know, just, I mean, if you live in a city, it's like you see them, they'd use them in cities. Yeah. And so if you're in a city, you can go do it. But I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. I think you'd realize, you know what, maybe I don't need to take my car to that. And like whether it's going to the neighbor's house or it's going here, it's there. It's just a fun way to do it. Uh, they have quality feature filled models. Finance as low as seventy three dollars per month. Uh, they have a powerful removable battery, a bright LCD LCD display. Uh, electric e bikes offer a wide range of custom customizable and adjustable e bikes to work with. There's over two hundred and fifty thousand riders on the road so far. Roam freely and reach up to 28 miles per hour with the twist of a throttle, our next level pedal assist. So you can pedal and it just kind of gives you that extra boost. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or you can just straight up use a throttle. And I mean, 20 miles per hour is, you're going. Yeah, dude. yeah, they're great. I rode it around yeah. your neighborhood and it's awesome. I was pedaling at first and you were like, you don't have to pedal. And it was great. Yeah, it's very fun. Yeah. It, it feels, riding a bike, you know, I, I feel like scooters can make you nervous. I've been trying to learn to skateboard. I fell. Got a big scrape on my elbow. I'm too. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I'm too old to do it. I need maybe to late in the e game to learn. Yeah. It's late in the game to mm -hmm. learn to skateboard. Yeah. So electric e bike is uh, what I, I. You know, that's what I want to start doing. I'll just ride that, and I'll feel cool. Celebrate your mom and give her all the freedom that comes with electric e bikes. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the epic models Electric has to offer. That's L E C T R I C E bikes.com. Uh, all right. So uh, we are getting into robots. Uh, but up first, we're going to talk about we uh, did the 2023 Titans, Tennessee Titans schedule release video. Yeah, it was and, uh, really exciting to be there. <laughs> I think it came out great. Came out perfect. It looked really good. I got a lot of screen time. Yeah. Dusty didn't think he was seen. Show Dusty. Boom. Look I, at there that. He is. There you are right uh, there. Yeah, How much that. more do you want? Dusty? You're right there I mean, in the middle of the video. I man. am a bit of a camera hog. I get maybe, it. <laughs> maybe for two seconds think this is about the Titans and not about yeah. Dusty Slay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I agree. But you know what? I liked going down there and, and doing you know 25 takes and uh, i feel in the end 6 30 in the morning they yeah. did get a good side of me and one of my favorite things is they also included these cards in the tweets where they said who was your favorite cameo <laughs> and they still listed me oh and people are well, like nice. where was he i replied yeah. dusty slay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if you go go for it a little bit this is uh yeah, we filmed this at seven in the morning we had to be down there at 6 30 yeah. yeah. in the morning Welcome at 545. So if, if you're just listening, it's a continuous shot moving through a bar. Right now we're seeing Seamus, yeah. uh, the wrestler, who's a very cool guy. Very nice. Very nice. And then he's at the bar. And then he's going to approach us, the four of us, just hanging out at this bar. And then they go downstairs after us. That was filmed at a different time. We were only there when the upstairs. There you go. Seamus bumps Look into at us. Nate. Two thumbs Bargatze there. Yeah. And uh, Nate and Seamus have a moment. Yeah. We were cracking up because and, and, and what, what should, well yeah what should have happened they cut me out because I didn't run they didn't cut you out yeah because you didn't I was well, ready yeah to maybe fight him. well you were being different yeah that's to be fair as we did this at the beginning it was like all right that's all like run like it was going to be that you guys run away and I'm left alone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was the plan but Dusty could not get over the fictionalness of this. <laughs> <laughs> that he goes, we wouldn't run and leave well, him like that, which yeah. is very loyal. Yeah, and I like. Nice. Yeah. That's very nice. But he couldn't even. They we check. We had to change the whole thing because Dusty's like, I wouldn't run. Well, I don't like the idea that here we are, a team here, and yeah. then uh, our first, you know, real display out, out as a team, we're leaving you behind. Yes, I don't like that. Yeah, that uh, and I, 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 that makes sense to me. I and I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh. It's and I and I do understand that. I mean, I don't want to fight shit. That's why we changed. Yeah. Where I was like, well, we're all just run. Yeah, like we're all just. It's much better. Yeah, much and it was, and uh, I think if you would have went the way 
Aaron went, if you'd have ran the way Aaron went, you would have had a solid. Well, the only way I had, the only reason I had to run that way is because I ruined, I think, four takes bumping into the camera. Yeah. Yeah. On the exit. It was tough and very embarrassing. Because they'd be like, hey, everything was great except for, uh, yeah, Aaron bumped into well, the Well, they would then. call you out. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Well, there was one time where I was really getting into it, and I'm behind you when Seamus is, and I'm like, yeah, like you want some of this? <laughs> and Aaron and Dusty were live, like, ah, oh, that was pretty funny. And then at that moment, the camera guy comes over and goes, hey, could you not do that? You're <laughs> yeah. blocking the shot. Yeah, that yeah. new thing you're doing, don't do it. Yeah, it was like yeah. the one creative decision you'd made, and <laughs> yeah. you're so proud of it. <laughs> and then as soon as you said that, they're like, you got to cut that out. You're blocking the shot. Yeah. But you uh, still get a little bit of attitude right get, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah there you go, some acting. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't didn't even know Dusty was supposed to be in it, so they're just coming. Ah, oh, typical breakfast. Just see the back of his head. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, very cool to be a part of though. And then all the cameos down here on yeah. the bottom: Keith Urban, Marcus King, Jelly yeah, Roll, Jeff Fisher. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm honored by to it. To see it after is very, very cool. Yeah. Honestly, once again, you're in it, dude. You're, you're right, in it. You're right at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is all these extras. Right? I mean, you're in it maybe too much. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, it looks like it's about you. That's yeah. actually a pretty crazy cameo because you got such a look yeah. that they yeah, don't really bad. need to show you. Like, right. the cameo is like, all right, you're like the Easter egg that goes... If they know, if people know you, that's a fan. They know that's mm-hmm. dust. That can't be anybody but dust. And they don't know that I ran from Sheamus. Yeah, uh, me that's either. true. That's right. Yeah. Me neither. You, you stayed stay, there and yeah. fought him out. Yeah. Um, we wrestled. And I don't know if there are many people, Dusty, that could be recognized that blurry from that distance. That's true. You've just got such a unique look. I think you're lucky that this worked out like this. <laughs> And you're, you know what? Now that you frame it like this, <laughs> yeah. I, I am. I do feel lucky. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a that's a solid. I think they honestly probably thought we don't have Dusty in, and then they uh, right here they goes that I think they did this on purpose to get you in that shot right there. Yeah, yeah. Now the other thing too is they emailed and asked for me alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know. You know, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, it was a very cool video. The Titans really killed it with the schedule release because then they also had the other video. That went viral. Yeah, yeah, that went viral. That was so funny. Yeah. And it's crazy. Oh, they, the man on the street stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was great. Yeah. It was like great to be like, this was supposed to be the cool video. Then they just have a <laughs> random thing that's like, boy, that's the funniest thing we've ever seen. I think teams will try to copy that. And I For like sure. that they put in who they were saying. Yeah. Uh-huh. They were just that's legit. Was, yeah. That's what made it so good that they – and really other teams it. changed their logo for a few days to match it. To match what was said in the Titans yeah. video, yeah. Like the Falcons changed their like Twitter page to the Atlanta, I forgot what they what were. Red Stallions Red or Stallions. something, whatever they said. Yeah. They like played it. along. Yeah, I mean, that was awesome. The, the bar- whoever, whoever thought of that. Yeah, that's really smart. That's really smart. The that, bartender that in this, though, video. I don't even remember that guy being a bartender while we were there. Well, that's the thing. None of these people were here when we were doing it. No, no. I mean, upstairs, the guy. Well, talking Josh to Headley was there with us. Josh I don't Headley. think he's in this. Yeah, he was the bartender. I felt like the whole day while we were How there. would they edit that together? Where do they cut? There are a couple places where they just do. Where's the cut after this? Like, let it just play out. So you, we run away from Seamus right here. Yeah. And then it'll pan to the stairs, and you can see. See, there's a there's oh. like a moment where there's no people in the yeah. shot, yeah, and they can change it right there. So it's like right when that guy walked by, yeah, and it, but it's done really seamlessly, really well. It it's looks done. like we're all at the bar at the same time, so good. But this was probably filmed in like four different kind of mm-hmm. time at blocks, least. you know. Like I don't think Jelly Roll was here the same time Keith Urban was, right? But it sure looks like it all happened at the yeah. same time. No, yeah, Jill, I mean, the this bottom half, these people were not here when we filmed. None of the bottom half was there. We uh-huh. just, the top half was all yeah, real. Yeah. But then the, then they, uh, all this bottom one is filmed a separate time. That's pretty fun. You I know, mean, Jeff Fisher to do it, that's, I mean, it's a. Yeah, it was cool, man. Yeah, that, that, this is a great idea, too. I but, mean, the Titans really, they, you know, they killed, but that's they how the it. content goes now. It's like the thing you work so hard on that looks so great, barely gets views. And then the thing you think, well, this is not going to do well, goes viral. But that is such a, mm-hmm. 
This yeah, is a fun video. Like it is a very fun video where it's, you know, it's just the the way it's shot, the way it's done, it looks super cool. And then Keith Urban up at the end. Totally. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you to the Titans. Yeah. For letting us be a Thanks part of Thanks for having us. Very cool. I had no idea Kat, Keith Urban was so tatted up. Yeah. yeah dude. He's a cool yeah. guy. He's a yeah. rock star. Yeah. Man. There's another story that a lot of people have sent us based on one of your old jokes about the uh, the guy sucking people's toes in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah. And Oh, is that why I've been getting tagged in that? I think so. I never made the connection. I was like, why is everybody tagging me this creepy dude sucking people's toes? Do you know the story, Dusty? No. It was at the hotel the, next to the bridge. Show. Yeah, the Hilton, right? The Hilton. He worked there. Was it the night of your show? No. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, no but, one no one was thinking that until you said it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you acting like, hey, were you doing it? Was that no, you? No, no, that no. Taste he, goes, you? he goes, is this like that one time you did it? Okay, somebody sent this to me, and then they pointed out they arrested the guy oh, at his geez. at his yeah. house in Lebanon. Oh, and, always lock that inside lock when you're staying at a hotel. I don't know who's not locking that lock. Yeah, and, I do. I always lock it too, and then sometimes I now I don't always because sometimes uh, if someone needs to get in my room, like if Chase needs to get in my room to get something, or sometimes it's like someone's got to go grab something, and mm -hmm. you know. So I don't sometimes. Well, there's a way to get around that inside lock. I've seen I mean, it the, 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 uh, the, like the, like the, what used to be the ch equivalent of the chain. Yeah. yeah now yeah, they have that. You can get around that. How do you get around that? They have a way of doing it. Yeah. If, if they have to. Yeah. You know? Well, but I bet it makes noise. Oh, it, it you can't would, do yeah, it covertly. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you'll wake up. Well, people pointed out they arrested the guy at his house in Lebanon, and sure enough, I looked, and I graduated high school with this guy. Oh, <laughs> no way. I know him. What? Are oh, you serious? Man. Yeah. 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 Uh, was, he your, was he your buddy? I, no. I mean, I only saw him at class reunions, but uh, I know yeah. him. I mean, I've known him. No, I mean, we kept in touch. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. David Neal, yeah. David That's Neal. wild. Yeah. Mm. Well, what would y'all have in the water out there? <laughs> That's Lebanon for That's you. That's Lebanon for you. Because there's a lot you. of toe suckers out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. I am uh, proud of Lebanon, though. I forgot to mention this. One of the Titans draft picks, Colton Dow, mm -hmm. from Lebanon. And I grew up with his dad. Known his dad all my life. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And so Colton's it kind of bal yeah, balanced yeah. out what happened with this other guy. Well, I'd maybe separate those two stories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're literally talking about you. Went, you go, I went to high school with this guy, but I am proud of Lebanon. <laughs> Well, that's a this, that's a bad mark in Lebanon. I yeah, think. this guy though, it's like what a weird. It's so here's weird. the thing. It's yeah. it's the it bad. It's weird. not a bad mark on Lebanon. It's it's just I'll be honest. It's probably what people just think Lebanon does. It's it's going to be what the people think Tennessee does. Like mm -hmm. you know, they're just everywhere else. We know mm -hmm. it's a, but you know, we don't care what they all think. We know it's, it's a weirdo. Who who uh, it says Brennan reportedly screamed when he found Neil. On his toes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And I like that he immediately recognized him as a hotel staff. I don't remember what anybody looks like <laughs> yeah. at the hotel. <laughs> well, I think guy, he'd already called the guy and asked him for some help. He, or he came and uh, helped him with his TV oh, the no. day before. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Bit of a bummer, the whole story. Yeah, yo. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, I wonder if that guy is going to sue Hilton. Can you oh, sue man. Hilton? Probably. I mean, yeah. I don't trust anybody out here like that. I'm locking those doors <laughs> up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so crazy. That's crazy that you knew. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when was the last time you talked to him? The night before this? Did you? <laughs> I mean, did you recognize him from the mugshot? Um, as soon as I saw the name, I was like David Neal. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. And I looked at his Facebook page. I thought we might have been Facebook friends. We yeah. weren't, but his last photo was from our class reunion. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow what did he say did you talk to him you him, really, him and brian arm in yeah. arm <laughs> i missed our last reunion even though i helped plan it because that's me you and leanne did that show in mississippi and yeah. i missed it but so i guess it's been our 25 year reunion uh, -huh. uh 25 years ago now that uh i last saw him yeah but yeah. i've seen him every five years yeah we'll see him at the next one yeah 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 Wait, your 25 year reunion was 25 years I ago? I was joking. Oh, I was trying yeah. to beat you guys. <laughs> I was like, to the punch. Yeah. What year was this reunion? It was the 30. The 30. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, but I mean, y'all graduated... might, might do a, a one coming up because you might need to talk this out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keynote speaker. So our, our 30 year reunion was 2020 and it was delayed because of COVID. So 
Uh, you are the age group that just can't get together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, it's just too risky. It's too risky. <laughs> many people. Yeah. Uh, so our 35 year, year reunions in two years. So, oh, well, now y'all got someone famous. It's yeah. going to be, uh, gonna be yeah. the talk of the town, yeah. man. What if he shows up and he's like, yeah, he goes, that was a wild time, man. <laughs> that would be great though. If he yeah. got out or whatever and he just shows up, he's like, yeah, you guys knew what I was into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, can you give me a discount to the Hilton? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man. Mm. Uh, all right. Well, uh, when I am downtown staying at the Hilton, I use game time again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was again not the, the maybe way. Separate this whole ad from what we've been talking about. Yeah, yeah. separate the ad, but you separate you talking about you and Lebanon. You've done yourself no favor. <laughs> well, I was going to do Colton Dow playing for the Titans. Yeah. I'm going to buy Titans tickets on there game you go. time. Okay. There we go. You, you shot right. it down too fast. So. No, no, you no, could have brought so it back up. Yeah, yeah. All right, Colton Dow from up. Lebanon. I went to school with his dad. That's awesome. He's yeah. a good guy. I hope he makes the team. Yeah, we had a whole Titans run, and mm-hmm. then it was interrupted with by game this. Time. By, by, oh, yeah. But I mean by this guy. But game time. Game is time where is it's game at. time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know what game time is? Nah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> last know. minute, if you want to buy tickets for a show. No, um, I do know what game time is. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's great deals on last minute tickets, including their best price guarantee. I like the game time app because they can make it easy to see the seat view right there. In the app. When I go to Nate's first pitch at the Nashville Sounds game, I want to know. Where am I going to see, see it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to see. I want a good angle. I want to make sure. It's, I don't want him saying it was a strike when I know it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I want a good angle. And it is good it. to know. Nothing like showing up to a, a show and you're like behind a column. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is good to know. Yeah. They're the only ticket app uh, that I know of that offers lowest price guarantees, event cancellation protection, and mm-hmm. job loss protection. You lose your job on this podcast, can't afford it, just get your money back. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code NATE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code NATE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. All right. Boom. Uh, robots. Robots. Who uh, here has a robot in your house? Like Alexa? I, I think know. that would just be AI, I believe. Yeah. But you have a Roomba? You have a Roomba? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Oh. That's a robot? Hold on. A what? Roomba? Roomba. I said Roomba, but Roomba. Yeah, yeah. Roomba? Roomba. Yeah. Roomba. Woof. Do you have a woof? You got one of them Roombas. Roombas, Roombas up here. Up here. Yeah. I have an animatronic. What if it comes in here now? It's like, brrr. <laughs> and you're like, sorry. <laughs> I have, an anim- my mama? I have an animatronic Rodney Dangerfield that you push a little button and he moves and tells jokes. Does that count as a robot? You're talking about an electronic action figure? Well, yeah. he's just on a stand and you push it and then he he starts telling jokes. Oh, I don't, I don't know, know if that's a robot. That's not, that's not a okay. robot. All right. You got a Hulk Hogan clock. Yeah. Do you, you have, have a fish that clock? sings on the walls? <laughs> I don't have that. I used to want one oh, of those yeah. so bad, dude. Those yeah. were so funny. So oh, cool. Billy Bass? Is yeah. that what it was called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it'd bend up and. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Take me to the river. Oh yeah, would sing that song. Drop me yeah. in the water. You would know the song. You know what I just <laughs> got? I just got the litter litter robot for our cat. Huh? And I don't know if that's technically a robot, but robot is in the name, so it felt. What does it do? It just yeah. cleans it on its own. It scoops itself. It does everything itself. Yeah. It changed my life. Does your family like that you have a cat? We had a cat growing up, but it was it never came inside. Mm-hmm. It was an outdoor cat named Cal. That yeah. was its name. And it got hit by a milk truck. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I love the specificity of that whole thing. Had yeah. A cat yeah. named Cal that got a, hit by a milk truck. We had a cat named Cal and we had a dog named Yipper <laughs> that uh, we had to keep chained up to the basketball goal because it kept biting the kids. Uh-huh. And it yeah. lasted so maybe, got a, to move maybe a month. Brian's car. Mm. Oh, do you block somebody? Apparently. Yeah. You do that a lot. Just pulls in right in the middle of the driveway. I, I pull it sideways. <laughs> Diagonally, yeah. Yeah, yeah to block everybody. And he goes, what are we? Oh, other people are coming today? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think we have a Roomba. Do you have a Roomba? I don't have a Roomba. I saw a Roomba? Uh, Roomba? electric. I saw a, some a mowing a grass robot, like a mowing the grass Roomba. Really? I saw it this weekend driving to, uh, I forget where, to the show somewhere. And... uh it went. I mean, it was going under a tree, and it just it was mowing a whole yard. Mm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was, it was just yeah, it was like that. 
Now, is it remote controlled or is does it just work? I didn't exactly? get out and ask the guy, but it was uh, <laughs> we were driving by, so you might already know more. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. They had a remote control lawnmower. Yeah, that that's a good movie. It is a good. I movie. thought about Sean Harper that movie. I can't remember. I feel like there's one curse word that I don't like, but uh, I've never seen it. I feel like those movies always throw one. It's mainly yeah. the weird makeout yeah. scene in the middle of the thing. Mm. That seems uh, unnecessary to me, but yeah, yeah. Have you ever used VidAngel? Uh no, it's a uh, it takes out all the bad parts of movies. Oh really? You watch the movie and they take it out for you. Oh wow, yeah, yeah they got sued, right? Maybe. By, by, yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure they got that, sued. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did it's because they bar, were right? yeah. Not, yeah yeah. It's the people they drive our show. I mean, it's a giant. I think I know the guy. Hmm. I actually think I the guy that owns it. I've t- met him in Utah because we've talked. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if it, if that's. Because the concept of this, I, I, I is the idea. But I think they were taking movies. It was like, but the copyright you can't just take mm-hmm. and take out, you know, uh, whole scenes or whatever. I don't know something. Uh, so we've been trying to do this for a month. Uh, a month ago, New York Police Department added robots to their department. They have a it's called a diggy dog. They call him Spot for fun, and it uh, it's a robot dog that goes in in places that might be too dangerous, and um, you know can do a can do a lot of things. weighs seventy pounds, runs three and a half miles per hour, can climb stairs, and uh, people were upset about it. They tried it a couple of years ago, and people uh, got so upset that about it that they stopped it. But then they they've got a new mayor now in New York City. He's the former police chief, and he's like, we're going to use it. And when a uh, Robocop, here we come. Mm, when a parking garage good. collapsed uh, a few weeks ago, they used it to go in to search for survivors because it's safer than obviously sending a human. Right. So it's been put to use. Safer if, unless it doesn't work well. The dog comes out. Nobody's in there. Yeah. There's just people all over the place. Well, mm-hmm. I guess that's true. Mayor Bill de Blasio is, quote, glad the digi dog was put down. It is creepy, alienating, and sends the wrong message to New Yorkers. Mm. <clears throat> New Yorkers said, yeah, the first time they were like, we didn't ask for this. But then the new mayor says, it helps. I'm going to use anything that helps us keep people safe. I know. But that's. <laughs> yeah. 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 San Francisco, uh, I you think. go down a road. We're going to use a moralless uh, robot yeah. to police people. And then they start arming it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be a real problem. So that's one they have there. They have one in Times Square that just goes around and uh, just looks for, you know, crime and then. People, if people are a victim of crime, they can go up to it and tell it what what happened, and uh, it will report it back to the police station. The victim will tell the robot what happened. Yeah. Okay. It's called the K five Autonomous Security Robot, or ASR for short. Real personal policing. And and then yeah. it, but how can it? It just rides around and then. I think I said. Did I not send you links to these? And s- uh, not these particular. Okay. I'm keeping an eye. And on. then right. uh, and then so it. That's uh, crazy. Um, and, yeah, it looks like a bread maker just yeah. kind of rolls up to you and you speak into it, but it can tell you if it's, uh, you can just order this. That's what's crazy. It's like, you can just, anybody can order this, uh, how to buy. Yeah. It's currently, they currently have these at malls, warehouses, hospitals, airports, casinos. I haven't seen these before. So you could just have one at your house and be like, I want you just to be outside when we go to sleep. And then you just it, patrol, patrol. It patrols the, the house. It yeah. patrols the house. You could do. I you mean, could. you really could. Like if you did say you, you know, yeah, you, you just have it like be like, yeah, it just patrols the house. And like, you know, but I feel like. What's it cost? I don't know. It's one of those. They don't have the price on here. You got to. So can you Google how much up. one costs? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be crazy but i mean i guess if you once it goes around one way then the burglar would just run in well the diggy dogs that first one we showed they got two of them for seven hundred thirty nine thousand, and they used it from money seized in criminal forfeiture cases whatever that is there you go that's where so you a lot of loose money they go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go now nah, this guy we found it you go all right you can use it you rent the robot for a year and it costs 70 to eighty thousand dollars a year to mm. rent it so less than a lot than paying an, an employee with benefits you yeah know? yeah so but it is they phase us out that's how that is how that is true that's how they phase out uh people and then yeah less 
but it's crazy that it's as much as uh, I mean, the second, but once they get this going, then the second it it's thirty thousand dollars. You're like, or ten thousand yeah, dollars. It goes down. Yeah, and then they'll have robots to just arrest us, so there'll be no talking to the robot to be like. You know, because, you know, you could do something wrong and then, like, have a little conversation and then maybe they go, all right, we're going to write you a warning. Mm-hmm. But the the but the but robot has none of that empathy type mm-hmm. thing. It goes, no, yeah. you've committed a crime. You're going yeah. to jail. Yeah. yeah, it's like you jaywalked and it could be you literal jaywalked or you were off the crosswalk just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, where does it – got to set a boundary. Yeah. So where does it, the boundary kind of get set, you know? The third thing that New York police just added is sticky GPS, where now if they're in a police chase, they can fire this thing at your car. It'll stick to your car. It can track you that way so they can avoid dangerous chases. Uh, but then you just get out of the car, switch cars. And then I mean, they have the helicopter always tracks them too. Yeah. I don't think you know that you've been hit with one, right? Well, I guess that could be true. I don't even know. Well, I bet they wish that article didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, un- this is also New York, unrelated to the police, they have trash cans that go around. I think also in Times Square. Yeah. C- that robot trash cans go around. They put a camera on it just to see how people would react. Would they be mean to it? Would they? Columbia University did a study to see how people are going to treat robots. So there was a camera on it, and there's video of this on there. And most people were pretty nice to it. Just comes up to it, and they throw their trash in. A few people kicked it, and yeah, did some stuff like that. But the cameras were just to do a study on how people are going to start treating robots in the future. Well, a robot that's taking our trash that seems like would be very nice to it. Mm-hmm. But a robot trying to give us a ticket. Well, yeah. it's the idea though. Are you going to be the robot? That robot taking it's taking your trash today. What's it going to do? Tomorrow? Right. Like right. they're making the, you know, you grab stuff out of your hands. Yeah. They're yeah. making the video to go like, well, how are people treat robots? You're like, well, I mean, how's that robot going to treat us? Yes. You know? And then, uh, it's early enough that there's still a novelty to it. I bet people are like amused. Mm-hmm. Oh, this yeah. thing comes up, but 20 years from now, when you're used to it, I bet the, I, your reaction is going to be a little different. You're going to be annoyed. I mean, how it. quick are they going to be where we're going to be dealing with robots? It's, it's really happening quick. so quick now. Isn't Domino's delivering pizza with, with robots now in like LA? Uh, self driving car. They, yeah. You know what? We saw it at uh, when I was at uh, Ball State, Volunteer State. <laughs> and uh, Muncie, Indiana. Yeah. In Muncie, Indiana, Ball State. They had an Uber Eats and it was just a robot. And it just goes down the sidewalk, right? And it pops up, and you grab your food out of it, and then it shuts, and then it drives back to where it goes, and it's just on the sidewalk. Wow, wow! And that was at Ball State. I mean, these kids were ordering food. I mean, we walked by it two or three times. Yeah, and somebody- like it's just you order to be living in an autonomous vehicle, grabbing your orders easy, and it's like just goes to your house, drops it off, and then you. Uh, that's it. I mean, no one bothered it. People, just, they just used to it. Like wow. that's where they're going to do it. They do it at colleges. These college kids just get used to it, mm-hmm. and then yeah. the, then when it's in the real, they're like, "Yeah, we had that college." Mm-hmm. But these yeah. college kids don't know. Is you're like, "Yeah, but the one you <clears throat> did in college was just gearing you up to now. Right. You're up against the wall, normal robot. It. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they somebody told me truck drivers were like ten percent of the population, like working population. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that number's true, but I know it's a lot. And if you got this kind of technology for truck drivers, I mean, think of all the jobs that would be gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're a truck, you should be concerned. Yeah. For sure. That's maybe one of the first jobs to go. And it's like in most states, it's like the number one job in the state. Yeah. So. Yeah, they make good money. <clears throat> yeah. Right. It's it's insane. Yeah. Elon Musk, and he's not the only one, but he thinks that they're going to take over all jobs that there's any physical labor, anything like that. And mm-hmm. we we need just a guaranteed income. He's that everyone just gets. He's not the only one that thinks that, but that you would have you need a guarantee. You yes, know. because so many jobs are going to be automated, yeah, and go away. That we're going to have to have some type of basic income just to survive. Yeah, yeah. he's one of the main dudes making this happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, it's a I weird. I know this is horrible, but I'm doing it. Well, Amazon's certainly doing it. A lot. Yeah. Well, he's the, he always talks about AI, right? Yeah. He's like not on board with that, or like you got to be careful with it. But then. But he, then he's one of the, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he wants to plug our brain to a computer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he always says it. He always talks about it. Neuralink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, he, they talk about the singularity, which is when computers get as, or AI gets as smart as humans mm -hmm. and then passes us. And 2029 is the year that they said it would happen. That's, I'd like to be living in the woods by that time. <laughs> in six yeah. years? Yeah. That's quick. You're yeah. pretty close. You yeah, I'm this. working on it. I'm, I'm working on it. You got I this, mean, I feel like you got the special out. Yeah. You just <laughs> take the special. It's <laughs> part of this piece of the puzzle. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't it feel like with chat GPS and all that, this happened this year. It's, I mean, chat, 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 chat GPS. <laughs> all right. I'm going to be a little behind, I guess. Yeah. But uh, was it chat AI? Chat GPT, I think. GPT. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Doesn't it seem like it's going to happen quickly? That yeah, AI it's all gonna... happening super, super quickly. And it's kind of uh, unnerving to think about. Well, the AI thing is like, aren't they uh, people writing articles and stuff for their right? You writing papers? They, mm -hmm. so I, I thought I read somewhere that it was like it's not fair because the teacher uses the AI to grade a paper that they're making the the kid write. Yeah, yeah. Like so, the teacher uses AI and like doesn't have to grade the paper, and, but then the kid gets in trouble for using AI to write the paper. And you're like, well, you can't do both. You know, it's mm -hmm. not it's not fair to. You so, know, someone just told me their son used AI to write his, he ran for like some kind of class president or something and used AI to write his speech, like to, to win. Mm -hmm. And he won. She said it was not a very good speech, but said he won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you, like, who's going to believe what, what, what people don't, what's crazy is the media doesn't like, you know, people already have weird trust with media anyway. And you add this in that I think that you're not even writing this. Yeah. The communication goes crump. The whole system crumbles. And not yeah. even just writing, but pictures and video. Anything. And everything will be so easily I, We walked faked. through an art at uh, in Greenville. There was a, they had a big art festival down in this. Greenville's a very cool town. It is a really cool great. place. And then... Uh, uh, Rory Scovel's from Greenville. Yeah. Uh, his sisters came out. Uh, but they're, uh, the, the whole, this, this festival, it went so far and so long. And, uh, like, it was like, we were like shocked at like how far. Lost my dad at one point. He's just gone. Just <laughs> gone. Just, I mean, we look over and it's just, he's just blended in. Yeah. Doesn't just, we gotta find him. Uh, so when we were going to the office, I was looking at, cause I was, I thought I was like, Oh, maybe I'll get, uh, for mother's day. I was trying to see if I could find something. Laura likes, uh, you know, like local art people that do paintings like that. And, uh, she, uh, and so we, I was looking at it, but then there's part of me that goes like some of them, you're like, I don't know if I believe everything. Cause some of the stuff being done, you're like, well, what you like, are you, like, are you just, this is like your, you know, one was, this one girl out there, her art was like the best one, I thought. And it was like. So like Roy telling Pam. Yeah. Your art was your the art, best art. The best art. Of all the art. Of all the art. <laughs> yeah. That's what I told her. You got the prettiest art of all the art that I've seen. But is it like just their idea? Like it's a giraffe. And a giraffe, like talking to a mice or something. A mouse. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. A giraffe talking to a mouse. Yeah. But you just say that and, and like, you know, and so your creativity is like, I just, you said draft mouse and then you had a computer oh, draw so that. so she didn't even paint it? This was, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I didn't This is the her. thing you showed us, right? Yeah, That's yeah. What your dolly is what we mean. So, I mean, what point do I believe that art is becoming, like, I didn't even buy anything because I'm like, well, I don't, you'd want someone to make it. And I don't know if I believe people are making it. Yeah, with this, we're all artists. We're, yeah, everybody can be an if artist. you can think it. It can draw it. Yeah. Which I'd like to get into, by the way. Yeah. So, like, that that made me another thing that uh, Tripe and draw a Giraffe talking to Giraffe talking to a mice? Yeah. Talking to a mice. <laughs> and what, what do you want? Did you, no, you, you go put it, mice? Like, put giraffe mice. talking to a mice. Put mice. Well, I'm just like talking to mice. No. To a mice. Do it how I said it. <laughs> Make his, it an incoherent prompt. This is his yes. art. Talking to a mice. What do we want? A painting? Yeah. Do we want a, yeah. a photorealistic It's like I'm talking image? to Brian over here. I'm like, hey, maybe have fun, Aaron. <laughs> and do something. <laughs> well, well, I'm trying to see, look, this, 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 all this works with formal logic, you know, all this programming. So yeah. you got to make sure that I it don't makes know. sense. What if you just put that in? And press generate. But you, you got to give it, let's give it a little bit of direction here. What do you want it to create? I say there's a no painting? direction. Like an oil painting? Oil let's painting. Let's see what it does. Let's to, do an oh. expressive oil painting. 
Well, now, I mean, why don't you just paint it then? <laughs> well, <laughs> that looks ridiculous. Is that it? Is that it? No, it's loading. That's oh, an okay. example of something else. I was like, it's all right, artists are safe for now, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here it is. Look. Look at that. Yeah. See? Wow, that's really good. Yeah, it's really good. See, I mean, like, if they, if that is... That's not even... Like, who am I going to believe? It's a pigeon. Well, I said two of mice, so it's a little confused. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's a mouse pigeon, though. Yeah. Look at that. A lot of tongue... The tongue... <laughs> yeah. The long tongue... When we, the word mice came out, and yeah, click on that. Uh, what is that? Are those all that's yours? Aaron. These are previous prompts oh, that I've had on That's going to be yeah. embarrassing. Okay, we'll how go and clear those. How go embarrassing. Up. I was experimenting on there, dude. <laughs> how and you just type in stuff. Yeah. But see, what if you did? So, but the, the giraffe the, talks to a mouse acrylic. Okay. A acrylic. Now, you want to give anything else, any other kind of nah. descriptions? No. How do you spell acrylic? There it is. Here we go. Well, that's not good. That's a robot. <laughs> yeah, holding a balloon. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 trick is you see people that are really good at this. They they're so good at entering the prompt. Look at that. Yeah, these are good. Yeah, these are really good. I mean, that's a great painting. That's a yeah. great painting that someone would buy. Yep. That's what I mean. Like, so I'm looking at this art, and I'm in. The, if I know this exists, how do I know that you're not doing it? I think you have to see it happen. You almost have to see it. I, I, I know we got you. Got to. It's got to be something because these are getting so. That's so. I, I think if that's it, so perfectly imperfect. That's the crazy part about. I it. I think right. if it's on a if it's oil painting on a canvas, you can at least even feel the texture. Yeah. That's true. I mean, uh, you know. But yeah. I could have this printed with texture. Yeah. 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 Oh, could you? Oh, I guess Probably. they got 3D printers. Yeah. I couldn't, but I could, you know, somebody could. So it like, so that, yeah, when I saw it, you're just going, I don't know if I, so I'm just looking at you typing, you know, it's like, you know, like if you, the, the, the paintings, like, uh, what's his, what's the guy's, you know, famous people with the ears. Pablo. Uh, yeah. All Picasso. Of them. Picasso. Who was the guy? That Is that the one with the ear? Da Vinci? Van, da Vinci. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Van Gogh, like though, like there was, you know, there they those guys truly like the the art like meant something or it's this whole big thing or it's right. you, you know he has like the one was picture was like a uh, guy painted a picture of Van Gogh painting because as he was painting he painted the picture and that's the story like that was a whole thing and then now it's like you're just typing in this stuff that does it I don't and I'm going to this art fair and it makes it hard to believe. It's a Van Gogh painting of a giraffe talking to a, a mice. Yeah. And so it makes it hard to believe. The other thing that this girl had, I, I, I don't know if it's a girl, so I shouldn't say that because I didn't see them. Uh, you were just guessing based on what the painting looked like? <laughs> yes. Not very good. <laughs> yeah. But a chick did this. But they go, uh, no, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I thought, maybe, uh, but it was, they said on there, uh, shipping makes me miserable. They put that on the so so the shoot the shoot was there they weren't even out there yeah and they just had a sign there I mean if you if you bought one someone was some they're probably sitting behind it yeah and so and I understand that like but if so you go through and then say they're sitting back there and then you were like I want that one I think most would be they would ship it to you because it's a giant thing mm -hmm. that's like unless you're buying like a one that's small like it's a pretty big thing that you're like yeah I don't know if I want to carry around this art fair for four hours. Yeah. And so, but that she put on their shipping, it makes me miserable. Me too. And it puts it on the outside. It does. As if to yeah. say, I, I will be annoyed if you buy something and ask for it to be shipped. Yeah. That's not on me. Yeah. The right. purchaser. Yes. Yeah. That problem does not exist in my world. I am buying something from right, you. Right. This is the problem that I have with a lot of like, you know, when I hosted at the beginning of my career, I I never liked hosting. I was never good at it. It's not the audience's responsibility that I don't like to host. It's not the comedy club's responsibility that yeah. I go. I but I don't like to host. Yeah, that's just what I had to do. You should have opened the your moment. sets with that. <laughs> Give just a like lecture. Know, I'm, I don't like doing this. <laughs> yeah, but it's not your fault it's or not, the club's fault. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, this. right. It's not their problem. It's 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 what I got to get. If I don't, if shipping makes me miserable then I got to get my business to a point that I don't deal with shipping. 
Yeah. That's the part. It's not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, shipping is not, there's going to be. just say, will not ship. You could say that too. You could say, will not ship. And then you let, you let what happens because of that happen. Yeah. yeah. But it's the idea that makes me not want to buy. I didn't buy the art because mm -hmm. it was, and I might have got, because they looked cool, even though if I don't know if they were real yeah. or not. So you had mm -hmm. a couple of issues with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm just saying, because we were talking about this, yeah. you don't know the difference. Right. But the shipping miserable made me leave. Cause it's just like, I, what do you, I, now I got to worry about, oh yeah, it's, it's a nightmare to go ship something. Mm -hmm. That's not my responsibility. Right. You're just selling, yeah. you're just selling too much art. You're just selling too, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you can't go to the post office, huh? You're putting your stuff onto me. Yeah. That's yeah. not, I don't have any. How many paintings are you boxing up? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I went to a fa thing like that this weekend too in Knoxville and they had these little ceramic things and it was like, uh, they had some little mushrooms mm -hmm. for like $20. It was too much for the mushroom, but I I've been trying to decorate this one little bathroom with mushroom stuff. I like it. I'm into it. So I wanted to buy it. I had $20 in my hand. The ladies like fumbling around with their square and tr and then there's like, I assume her husband sitting in a chair behind there. And I'm like, all I want to do is give you this money and leave with this thing. Mm. And the guy sits there. He never addresses me. He never he never moves. And I ended up walking off because I'm not going to stand here all day. Mm. I just feel like the the it's like you're down here already in the hot sun. Yeah. Stand up. Take the money. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. selling too many of these twenty dollar <laughs> mushrooms? Yeah. That you can't. You'd rather pack it all up than take the twenty dollars from that's, my hand. Wow. And that's what it feels. The vibe of stuff to me. These people, like the people that do stuff, like the one that I saw on that is you can tell the difference between someone that's like excited for you to be there and someone that's like, they don't need to be doing this. It's just, that's what it, that's what it, that's how it came off. Yeah. It came, shipping makes me miserable. She's not saying that she's not going to ship it. I guess she would ship it. I mean, something, the painting that I don't know if she put in a computer or not, it's like $1,700. Yeah. yeah. It's not, this is not, you know. A twenty dollar thing. Not that any of that matters. Yeah. I don't care if it was one dollar. What happens in your business side is not the customer's sure. responsibility. Your problems are not the customer's responsibility. They don't got to throw on it. But they're starting to do that. That's the tipping thing. I just thought I just read something about tipping. Uh, wow. They're starting so to do that with tipping. Where seventeen hundred dollars. Seventeen hundred dollars. And she's like, oh, I can't ship it. Yeah. Oh, that would make me so miserable. Seventeen hundred dollars based on the price of what? Yeah. On what? I don't. If something that. You are putting into a thing. If yeah. someone wanted to buy my art for seventeen hundred dollars, I would I would go to the post office with a smile on I'd my drive face. Drive it to their home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> why wouldn't the person just take it? They're on the spot anyway. Well, you don't want to carry it. I around mean, why with it's it. a giant painting? Oh, it is. That you? What are you gonna? You spend seventeen hundred dollars on a painting that you're mm -hmm. gonna maybe throw in the back of your car with your kids and your. Like, where are you going to put it? You got to carry it around. Got to carry of it around day. the rest of the day. It's a whole thing, and, and you're spending a lot of money on a painting that you're going to hang in a wall that you want it to be taken care of, and you want to be properly packaged. You're an artist. You probably know how to probably. That's part of it. If you don't want to be a part of that side of the business of it, I don't know what to tell you. Then you need you need to pay someone right. to go sell your art. You're like that carry, is fine with doing that. Carrying your painting around the festival makes me miserable. Yeah. My my whole drive in my whole career is to not have to do the things that make me miserable. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the that's your drive. You that's what you use to make you get to a point. You that I mean that's the most motivation I've ever had. In anything. If I didn't want, to, I don't want to stand on this corner and hand out flyers. That makes me. It made me miserable. I had to stand out. It was. 15 degrees out mm -hmm. you think i wanted to and I'm, i don't even like talk like i'm embarrassed i don't i'm scared i'm nervous doing this because people were walking by i'm like we got a great comedy show tonight and you get i didn't like it i don't i mean i really did not like it but that's not that guy's responsibility that's what i had to do at the moment so that's the motivation you use to go let me tell you what i don't want to be doing this mm -hmm. i'm going to do it now because i have to do it but I will not be doing this. I promise you that. And now I'm not doing it. And, and all of those little things that make you miserable is what motivates you. You can't just put shipping makes me miserable. And you go, well, that's not how you get out of shipping. You don't get out of it by just telling the audience or telling your customers, I don't want to do the thing that makes me not happy. I get out of it because I become so big of an artist that 
we'll ship it to you. And I say we because I'm not shipping it yeah, to you because yeah. I don't like shipping. I don't want to deal with it. But don't worry. We will get someone that will handle it for you. And so you do that. And if she doesn't want to ship, then guess what? You got a friend that you go, I'll give you 100 bucks or whatever you do. Mm -hmm. You can take uh, $5 from every sale. And you just go get their info and you go ship it and all that. I don't want to, like, I, shipping drives me crazy. It makes me miserable. But instead, they throw it on the person. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did not realize the painting was that price. So I just, it that just changes everything. It, it changes really does. Everything. Yeah. Like, I'm miserable because I still, like, if people buy stuff off my merch, uh, and I am working on it, I am working to get out of this. But if people go to my website and buy something, I go to the post office. I hate it now. But because I've been doing that for years, right? And I've not dealt with it. But that's not on them. It's not their fault. Is that, I don't is not, there, it is, it I is. don't have on my website sending this to you makes yeah. me miserable. Yeah. Yeah. It's not their, it's not even their worry. Right. I don't even, the, that, the customer deserves no burden given to it at all. The price is, is what you're giving them. They cannot feel any, you know, someone comes up and they're like, man, I bet you're tired and all this stuff. That's not, I don't ever want to put any of that burden on anybody. Right. That's right. An, like, if you go to a show or if you go to a thing, like whatever I'm doing is I will, I'll, I'll handle it. How I can handle it. The burden is not on you. It's not on the, and if you're any kind of business, the customer does not deserve the burden. You don't get a package of the burden, put that as a price. Right. And go, well, it's hard to get the, 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 the joy is you get to right. be like, if, if you're, you can do whatever you want. The joy is you're in control and you're in charge or you and you're creating something. Your vision is where it goes. Like if you're waiting tables and they're like, can you get me another drink? And you're like, yeah, it's downstairs. Yeah. But I'll go get it. Yeah. That's why we need robots. <laughs> yes. Running things. We are. This is whole thing about robots. <laughs> yeah. We just yeah. turn We love robots. You, go, you know what? Let's get some robots. Yeah. We need more. There'd be some advantages to it. Would you get a massage from a robot? Uh, I mean, you kind of, you sit in one of those chairs, but no, I don't like true. it. I, I like, don't like those chairs. At the airport, I do like those. I don't, I don't like the, it always hurts. I don't mind. I did one, uh, and it had like the, it blew up like uh, air, like air, those, like yeah. those, I like that. Like it feels like the pressure and yeah, stuff is nice, yeah. but I don't love the, you know, like metal circular this yeah that yeah. stuff you're like that those things hurt those uh, seats at the airport those kind of yeah. things. yeah i only don't like the leg thing i feel like it's gonna like clamp down and then break and yeah. then my legs will be stuck in this thing yeah that's a good feeling though mm -hmm. they sell machines <laughs> now though they do good. the full body massage from a robot like your back like you lay on a table does it have like human hands looking hands i think so i sent you a video of it um oh. it uh it does Aaron, not. I mean, I got all the videos pulled up, but that's, you know, just what happened, bud? Um, you got, uh, you have, it's kind of throwing a nice minor league today, huh? You're doing minor. <laughs> He's major league. You're minor. It goes to you. You don't know what's going you on. You didn't send me that link. Ooh. All right. Go to your oh, emails. Now we got, ooh. Oh, boy. We're going to put the burden of uh, all this on the audience that they go. <laughs> they go. Yeah, go ahead, Dusty. All right. Hey, you know, our, I don't know if you guys know this, but no, that's not the right way to phrase it. Oh. <laughs> uh, are rising prices stressing you out? Yeah. If you're looking like shipping costs or something, if you're looking for ways to cut costs, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscription, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like the Stars app, just to watch one show, or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. Then any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Yeah, I think this is great. Yeah, it's I think awesome. so. I, need I, to, I, I yeah. use Rocket Money. Yeah, we. I, uh, I, I want to look at it. I do have I a question to ask you guys here soon. Yeah. But uh, Rocket Money also helps you manage Sorry. all your finances in one place. <laughs> it's like and, a robot. Can't, he's <laughs> like, you can't go off. He's like, uh, <laughs> I'm in the middle of it right now. <laughs> and computing, uh, computing. And automatically <laughs> categorizes your expenses so you can track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money. Uh, saving the average person up to 
you ready? $720 a year. That's Here's a, a question for you. That's considerable. If you've used this before, Aaron, I know you have. Did yeah. you discover any unused subscriptions you forgot oh, about? Oh, several. I don't know if it's okay to name them specifically during this ad, but I had a bunch. Because what I do is I sign up, and then I see where the free trial ends, and I just put on my calendar, cancel it, but I ignore that, and I forget mm. about it. And it's just, I mean, probably $720 a year worth of stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. you, have you discovered any? L Magazine. Okay. Is that, no, I don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't know. But um, is that L McPherson's magazine? I don't know. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, but okay. Right, well, either way, to, it helps you out. So, yeah. so hey, stop throwing your money away. Cancel. cancel that joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nate. Rocketmoney.com slash Nate. There you go. I didn't want you guys to, you know, waste your responses because I knew I had a question coming up. Right? Oh, right. right yeah. Right, right, so, right. you know, I just was like, I was very excited. I feel that. like once that string gets pulled, we can't, you yeah. can't turn it off, you know? Yeah. 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 You're like just once that dusty. Tube of toothpaste. No, the dusty. Oh, kind of little, oh like, yeah. Like yeah, the I mean, pull string. or right. like, in my boot. Yeah. yeah. Right. You have yeah. to hold the string. <laughs> once you let it go, tight. it's like, it's going, man. Yeah. And we, we, you don't need to get in the way of it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I like to, I've not read this ad before. So, uh, you were you know, excited. Yeah. I was excited. Yeah. yeah. And I, I look forward to reading it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, we got I'll the get, massage robot I'll pulled get better up. at it. All right. Let's see. And it, it looks like it feels pretty good. I'll be it, honest. It, it looks better than I thought, but I still, uh, I mean, I'd rather have it. Oof, yeah. That's I getting in there, dude. Yeah. There's something about that if you have the fear of this thing getting stuck on you or jamming <laughs> oh, you too hard, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's like this thing could, have enough power to just break your back. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry. Snap yeah. the rib. Yeah. Out of no, and you can't do anything. There's no way out of it. And it's it's that's that's the thing that I would keep people away. Is you go like, I if it gets stuck or if it gets whatever, you could probably stop this video. I can't <laughs> watch any more of this video. And then, uh, but it's uh, I you know I I think you people want personal stuff. There's there's uh personality and people like it's it's you're not gonna. I think you will, what will happen is it will be, this is what's going to happen. It's, you're going to see robots involved more than you realize. And then next thing you know, they're like, well, they're doing robots for this. You're like, well, let's not do robots yet. And then you're like, oh, by the way, you've only been using robots. We just haven't really said anything about it. Like yeah. you go McDonald's, like, yeah. you know, you, you're going to cut to like, a robot's delivering the mail, and you're like, "Well, I don't know if we should do that." And they go, "Oh, that's the last one we did. We've done this for We've 15 years. Yeah, you've never gotten anything FedEx. You've ever gotten never. Uh, they don't even have people that work there anymore." You're like, "What? Like all this yeah. stuff you wouldn't know about?" Yeah, there's McDonald's in Fort Worth, Texas. That's all automated now. No people. 24 hours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a video of that too, uh, but it. Um, yeah, I mean, it just you open it should up be. Your, is it well, twenty? That's what you if want. it's not twenty four hours, I will be a few. Well, that's what you want with the restaurant is to uh, have no personal touch. <laughs> well, that's McDonald's. Well, it's, you don't go to McDonald's for a personal touch anyway. You know. Well, I, you know, you know me, it, I don't go at all. But uh, can you hit the? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. turn that music off. Yeah, I'm a tough time. Man. I'm killing it today. It's uh, there are no employees at the counter. Okay, you order there. Come to seat, give your order. If 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 it's not twenty four hours, then they should burn this place to the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just I just feel like with the with food, it's like you do want somebody to be making it. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. that works. Mm. Or if I mean, a mistake. Just be taken by robots, and yeah, I bet there would be less mistakes, <laughs> but uh, that looks uh, not good. Burger looks okay. It'll take you right to your table too. Oh, dude. There's got to be say no. one employee there making sure this place doesn't get burnt down. I don't know. I mean, you, uh, well, the, but eventually they're not, no one's going to be there. And then, you know, you're going to go and, oh, yeah. What, what would you the Chick fil A do? robot be like? <laughs> you know, who would, on uh, Sunday. God yeah. bless you. <laughs> I might be sitting here with three robots. 
<laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Get rid of y'all. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. yeah. Well, then we pass the Turing test. That's what it's called. Huh? The Turing test. Isn't that mm-hmm. what's I that? think comedy's going to be safe. That's where you are. You interact with a, a robot and don't even realize it. You interact with artificial intelligence and don't r- realize it at all. Wow. So imagine, you know, when you call like a, a customer service hotline yeah. and it's that automated and it's so annoying. If that gets to a point where you are talking to it like it's a normal person, that is past the Turing test. Is there anything that's past it? There's a lot of AI now. I mean, look, you read yeah. an article that's written by AI. Probably a lot of the ones you read, you don't even realize it. Yeah, those written. are passing. Yeah. But I think there's customer service where people don't know they're talking to a computer, right? Like a chat, like the chat yeah. that like on the website. Yeah. Well, I was thinking over the phone, but maybe it's just. Oh, chat. I've never seen it that well over the phone. I always know. You know right away. You feel it. I just read an article the other day. <laughs> AI is taking a lot of voiceover jobs because now they would get these voice actors to come in and it would just learn their voice and then they can have it recreate anything. So I, it, it's weird. It's a lot of creative jobs that are going to go first. I hear that and the, not- the writer strike that's happening right now is actually a part of it is that AI can now write tv scripts somebody was saying like ted lasso or something i don't know if that's a show they use that example but had ai wrote a, a an episode of that really and it was i don't know if it was one that was used uh-huh. but it, it wrote an episode that was as good as well, the look other. up did yeah look yeah. up ai ted lasso uh and 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 so that's like you know people could lose writing jobs because and i don't know if this is true this is just people talking i heard this Somebody yeah. did comment that for Nate's pilot, just you could get AI to do it now that there's the writer strike. Yeah. I mean, but I I just think if you don't have the, there's a, not a personal yeah, touch behind it. it. There has to be some, like there has to, the, and I think that we can all feel that because you, you could but, buy into stuff. I mean, that's why music, look at music now. Uh, the biggest people are like, it's like Taylor Swift. It's like you're, because they're buying into her. Mm-hmm. And so it's like I'm on board with her, and like old music was, that's why they're you know Leonard Skinner or all those the Allman Brothers, Derek Trucks was an Allman Brothers. Like the people were into them because they're they it was like it was real and that everybody wanted real. I think people are going to go back to real. They want real. I think the government probably wants robots. I think a lot of businesses want robots because they want it's the cheapest thing to do. Yeah, but people are, are going to just be like, yeah, I don't want. Uh, thing. I mean, look at like like your all your. I mean, look, we drink coffee or diet, Dr Pepper, diet, all this diet Pepsi. Like that's probably. I mean, there's no human that needs to be there for that. You know. Like, yeah. You're just probably the way those those conveyor belts work. Yeah, you're just everything that you do. If I have yogurt, it's like I don't know what's a human going to do. Like put the top on it. It's like no, they just a machine yeah. does it. And yeah. They're just kind of there to I guess like make sure it all goes good. I mean, machines have been around for a long time. And there was probably always someone complaining that it's taking a job. John Henry had to beat the st- st- steam engine or something, right? I thought he was like drilling nails or, or spikes. Yeah, whatever it was he had to beat, and he beat it, and then he died. Mm. Mm. This is going to be the new thing. We're going to we're gonna have to be the John Henrys of our time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there some other? Wow, it's deep. In Hawaii during COVID in Honolulu, they use robo dogs to uh, take people's temperature at homeless camps. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh my gosh. There you go. Oh man, <laughs> that's so insane. Boston Dynamics dogs walking that's up. That's insane. For safety. Yeah, these dogs can do wild things too. I've seen. We yeah. have your best interests at heart. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah, <laughs> that's man. crazy. Wow. The f- yeah, the fact that it's for our own safety. It's unreal. Yeah, we don't care if you have a house, but what's your temperature? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So when robots get to the point where they're like like humans, there's three laws for robots. Now, this just came up. Some guy just invented these. Robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. That's the first law. So it's going to have to injure a human being if someone's going to come into harm. It's going to have to stop, uh, uh, you know, like a murder. Well, I mean, I guess it just grabs the guy. The second law is a robot must obey the orders given it to it by its human, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. 
What are these? What are these laws? And this is just the code of ethics. Yes. That we're well, robot they, yeah. ten command. And so far, the code of ethics looks like it's like here's the law, but the robot does not have to do this law. And then he's all right. Well, what's the next one? All right, all right. Here's the law, but the robot can also. Re- what did you? But read the, the second, second law one? said basically was saying if you told your robot to kill you, he couldn't do that because the first law is it can't hurt you. Yeah, I know. But read the first law. Again. First law is a robot may not injure a human being or through in an inaction allow a human being to come to harm so it's it's got to start the harm well if, a, if someone is trying to kill someone i mean then it can end it will injure the other human being that's stopping that human being so already right there you're already it's a it's already out like it's already the this the, the law is already well there's an excuse for it and yeah. that's the fear that they it's it's the fear of it is the robot then decides well you're harming my human so I'm going to injure this other human, even though your law says I'm not supposed to injure humans. Mm-hmm. But I have a, a look around or what's that called? A loophole. A loophole where, but he was injuring me. And then what's the second, read the second, the second law. Second law is a robot must obey the orders given to it by its human, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. So except, so everything's, ex- there's just a, there's a loophole in all of it. Well, when does it, it, it has to listen to your human unless you are hurting the like if you're hurting someone then it doesn't have to listen to your human it doesn't sound and like it, it can stop it. anyone from hurting you no it's, it can like, yeah pets but you're yeah this is kind of like in Terminator 2 Terminator 2 I have not seen it Arnold Schwarzenegger was there to protect John Connor mm-hmm. and if he was killing people and yeah. John Connor was like stop killing people and he's like okay and then he just started still shooting them, injuring to the point where it wouldn't hurt John Connor, but it didn't get the point. Like, it, yeah, that's kind of what you're saying. Yes, I'm saying there's there's you're you're putting so if you put that stuff in, I mean, a robot can then it's I mean, what's the who's to say? And all this has to be who's to say who's being harmed and not being harmed and not like I know it seems like it's a an obvious thing, but like. If uh, me and my buddy are like just like uh, wrestling around, right. two friends, and then the robot sees it, like who's to who's to decide yeah. what is harm, not harm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and can you shut the robot down? I mean, if AI is in the robots and it has a kind of a mind of its own, then we're uh, we we're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the third law we've is, been making movies about this for a while. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the third law: a robot must protect its own existence. As there long as go. such protection does not conflict with the first or second law, right? So I don't, I don't yeah, the the, the accepts are the, the the thing you have a problem with. Uh, what's the point of the third law? It must. How does it protect itself if that? If yeah, it why can't would it? Hurt you? Why would it need? I don't to want it to itself. fight. I don't want it to fight for itself. I just yeah. want it to do what I program it to do. And then if it goes down, it goes down. I don't want to give it a will to live. Yeah, you know that's that's, that's the true. scary one. That's the scary one. I'm yeah, I want example. it to be okay with dying. Yeah, because I'll or turn not it even off know it's going to die. Say it again. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So it basically saying it should give up its life if it's to protect you from being yeah. injured. But other than that, it should protect itself. But the whole thing is it's not supposed to injure a human. Well, what if a guy runs up and starts kicking the robot? Or like and they're trying to take a gun and it has a gun pointed at the robot. Or puts dynamite on the robot. What's mm-hmm. the robot going to do? It, it's not supposed to hurt anybody, yeah. but now it does need to hurt someone because that guy person is trying to hurt it. Yeah, this is already who wrote this? Uh, one of the AI no, folks. It sounds like just yeah, one, one of us folks yeah. wrote in. I, I really think it was just some writer who was writing about robots, but he yeah. came up with this in the early days of robots. Yeah, so this is not a real law. Then this is just it's not, there's no like government law, but it's um. Yeah, Chat GPT cranking out some uh, some laws for us too. You remember uh, Rocky's robot and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Rocky, Rocky three? Was it four? Yeah, when he was in Russia. Oh, okay, I thought it was four, three. It's the beginning of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got a little robot. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So if I want to watch a robot taking over. Terminator's the way to go. Mm-hmm. I think so. There's a yeah. lot of them. What's another one? Uh, well, Robo 2001 Space Odyssey. That was the original AI. Oh yeah. There's such a good movie that I can't 
pronounce it. I don't ex ex, ex machina. machina. Yep. Oh, ex, ex machina. machina. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, ex machina is how I say it to myself in my head. I think that's how they say it. Ex machina. No, it's ex machina. Ex, yeah. I don't. I think you're. Oh, there's a. Oh, we've had this debate on, on There's a Bruce before. Willis one over ex machina. What's the Bruce Willis one? Um, AI. Uh, no, I think of a surrogates. surrogates. Oh, I have surrogates seen is really good. I just watched this not too long ago. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, I'll check this out. Yeah, there's but a lot about the Turing a test too. in here. I Robot. Will yeah, Smith? I think that I one did trouble. terrible. I've trouble watching Will Smith now, even yeah. his old stuff. Right, you'd never seen it before. No, no, I, I think I want to see it. I'm saying after the Chris Rock thing, I just yeah, I have a. Doesn't it seem hard sometimes? You see his movie and you're like an old movie and i'm like i just can't but there are some actors where i feel like i only see the actor in the mm -hmm. movie and i don't i don't see the character i, I, I do too will but smith's I, a guy where i it's will smith and everything yes for me. yeah it's, it's not will a smith. knock on him but i i'm thinking that's yes will smith. that's will smith exactly yeah exactly you're not daniel day lewis you kind of can yeah, get lost forget it's him or whatever but it's yeah with uh you do the whole thing. Cause Will Smith's a superstar. He's like a hero. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like a different. It's a different thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, Mega Watch Terminator. I'm saying surrogates. If you've not seen surrogates, it. it's very okay. good. All right. Yeah. All right. There was that. Uh, I saw you just had it pulled up. The uh, robot that's going to Saturn's moon. Mm -hmm. The robot snake. Oh yeah. So there's water on Saturn's moon and they're going to send this robot snake there to search. Oh, I was, like, was like stuff that came out of my, what's my dryer <laughs> air outside. I think we'll get it up there. Just yeah. throw it. <laughs> well, that they're working on that too, but when they get there, they're going yeah, to, we'll get there. We'll cross that yeah. bridge when we get to yeah, it. The, yeah. yeah. To the water. I like the scientist. He goes, moon. so I got the thing ready to walk on the moon. We don't even know how to get there. dude. <laughs> Why did you go work on that first? Saturn's moon. That's too. that is a scientist not doing like that just gets distracted and is pointless. <laughs> he goes, How are we gonna get it there? He goes, Well, I just went and worked on this. Those thing. are different departments. This is amazing this how this like, thing moves, work. though. And they can drop it into places that no other type of robot could fit into. And that thing just crawls around on the ground. It's kind of creepy. I don't really like it. I don't like looking at it. And then, yeah, that's what'll be crawling in your backyard. <laughs> you can swim too. Oh, jeez. I'll be honest. I figured they would have something. This doesn't seem very futuristic to me. Like yeah. I would think they could have something that Cover just it. flies around. They have drones. Yeah, you could have a tiny drone that could be like, ah, oh, I could fly into anywhere. Like, cause it's I'm it's a drone. Be a really small one though. Yeah, but they 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 can make I th that. I think this is. I'm guessing this is super energy efficient too. What you is know? that? And it can climb up any surface. But I mean, a, if you have something fly, it can fly in anything. I guess sticking it down there, yeah. you maybe need something to big to burrow. It's really burrow. indestructible. Yeah, it's indestructible, maybe. But yeah, because I, yeah, I wish they would use it for something real instead of Saturn's moon. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we found water on Saturn. You know what I mean? Like, let's explore the ocean here. Yeah, I would. The ocean would be fun if they go down there. Well, there's water on Saturn. It's one day it could yeah. explore glaciers on Earth. Uh, but first, Saturn's moon. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do. Well, that's going to be one of the spots we go. Saturn has to leave Earth. Yeah. Why? I'm Just not going. Because it's an Earth like. You're not going? Oh, it is? Like, yeah. Europa, I think it's called. You think you get yeah. a choice? Yeah. You think they go, where do you want to go? I don't think you'll have much choice in anything. I think it'll point. be like the movie The Island. You ever see that where they're like, they tell you that one day you're going to the island, but then you realize that you're just like clones. Uh, yeah. And they're using your body parts. Mm -hmm. Most of these Uf UFOlogists, I think is how you say it, the. The, the UFOs that we see here, they think there's probably not aliens on there. It's probably uh, some type of robot, some type of, because they're going to go m billions and billions of miles here. No matter what it is, it's probably not alive. Yeah. That we think alive. It's probably like some type of AI robot that's running things. Yeah, probably. A, yeah, there's demons. <laughs> Although I mean, in Brazil, they had one. I mean, I mean, go on. Brazil had their own Roswell. <laughs> you said, yeah, but it was the exact really? opposite of what yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, AI so, is demons, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be. There yeah. was one that crashed in, in Brazil in, in 1996, 
And so there's still a lot of people alive that supposedly saw it. It crashed and uh, the, the alien was hurt. And uh, there's a documentary about it. And these these women found it and it asked them to help them. I don't know if it spoke to them telepathically or it spoke, spoke Portuguese. Maybe it took Babel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the government came in and would have been a good it took it away. Read. Yeah. It would have been. But all right. Sorry. You good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'll say one more. <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> Sophia is a humanoid robot who. Uh, oh, yeah, threatened to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, she got Saudi Arabian citizenship in 2017. That's oh, how they really asked her one time what, like, something, and she was like, I want to destroy humans or something like that. Oh, yeah. On 60 Minutes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a person. It's a social robot that can mimic social behavior and induce feelings of love in humans. So, not good. Not good <laughs> yeah, at yeah, all, dude. Yeah. Now, there are robots that keep people, like elderly people, keep them company. In Japan, there's one called Wakamara. And yeah, I mean, this is how they get you yeah. to accept it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's for your you own go, good. We're doing this for yeah, you. Yeah, you go, well, there's some robots. Yeah. There's some good, nice robots, guys. Come on. You're like, I think listen, I'm the only one here on board with robots. You're like, listen, Grandma, oh, I'm pretty yeah. busy. Here's a robot. <laughs> yeah. Talk to this for a while. You're on board. You like all this stuff? Well, I mean, you got to regulate it. I think it will be like Terminator, but I just think. <laughs> well, yeah, it stops there. I think any. Terminator is not a fun, You guys are being the happy, three grumpy old men, and I'm. Every new well, technology. Listen, yeah, you're not, gonna, you're not going to have to deal with all this. Brian, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> Brian's yeah. older than yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I'm out of here in a couple of years anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let the chips fall where they may. All right, you're right. You're right. You guys are going to have to. Yeah, be you're like, like to listen, I'll them. get to see it when it's all fun and friendly. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I'll be out of here. Yeah, there you send that snake thing. Yeah, you. they'll come get me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You'll put up a fight at yeah, least. Oh, yeah. You gonna make you gonna make sure it costs them some money to come yeah, get you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going in voluntarily. Yeah. 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 Be ready. Even if the, the <laughs> robots talk to old people, I'd imagine those old people would like to still talk to maybe their family or a person. Or, yeah. 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 Go in there, the robot slapping your grandma around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there's some old people that probably have no family. The, like uh, Ben Stiller and Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That kinda, yeah. You're in my world now, Grandma. But the point is they get to a point where these old people won't be able to tell. Yeah. And they'll sit there and they think they're talking to their uh, granddaughter. And they can maybe even get to that oh, now. gosh, yeah. I yeah. mean, these... Can, can you pull uh, this up? The walk mirror I'm sorry. Yeah. walk yeah. mirror just to show what it looks like. It's an ultra-compact helper robot. It can also use sensors to help you with your health. I think it's kind of like a life alert. Oh, yeah, like check stuff. Wakamaru. Yeah, oh, it. this thing. Oh, oh yeah, well, they yeah, know yeah. that's a robot. I've seen this. Yeah, because they remember this from the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that looks like the mage from <laughs> yeah. the cartoon. Yeah. That terrifies probably giving old people heart attacks. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. You want company? Send in the yellow <laughs> beady eyed yeah. robot. I'm just imagining. Billy? Is that you? <laughs> sicking that thing on my grandfather yeah. and see how he would handle it. <laughs> I mean, you, would you get to a point where no accidents would ever happen? Like you're just maybe walking around with like a backpack that just is checking your vitals and everything constantly uh -huh. and your surroundings and your and centering and all this. And so then you could get to like, you're never going to fall you know like airbags in a car like you're yeah. gonna be yeah. car wrecks are probably but, gonna go but down. who has yes. an incentive for us to to get rid of all those things uh well i mean doctors don't but i mean the so view, saying, I mean, yeah big pharma, big pharma everyone big pharma else doesn't they're gonna prevent all this from happening because they mm -hmm. want us to keep getting hurt and keep having diseases yeah you know well they're let only so much of that's true so i don't know who exactly has an incentive it'd have to be a truly altruistic force would be control it would i don't think it'd be money as much as it would be mm -hmm. control well contr yeah you're right like it's it's the 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 government or they could just like, say you're sick we're gonna treat it and then it just deducts money from your bank account mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah they would just charge you well, they got to pay for the robots yeah. yeah but it gives you a massage while yeah. Doing <laughs> yeah. It. Yeah, yeah yeah there was a case in um i think this is in germany at the volkswagen plant where a robot killed somebody it grabbed it and crushed it yeah and i think it went to court and then they said, well, it was the figure, just the robots in there. <laughs> robots got I rights. I plead the fifth amendment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does he know this stuff? Please raise your right hand. Yeah. I don't have hands. <laughs> hand on the Bible. Still stained with blood from yeah. crushing the guy. <laughs> <laughs>
And he goes, what is that on your hand? It's paint. <laughs> you go, I don't know if I believe this guy. Catch up. He's got to get, he's got six humans and six robots in the jury. <laughs> yeah. You got to get, because it's got to be of, <laughs> your peers, of your peers. The jury of your peers. And you go, this ain't going good. And they're like, I don't think he did it. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. I don't know about this guy. Mm. All right. That's it. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Robots. Oh, it's all scary. It's all fun. It's all fun, scary. Uh, all right. Yeah. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be, yeah, enjoy it. Uh, I, uh, yeah, we're about to get out of here. I, uh, I don't know where I'm at. North Charleston coming up. Oh, nice. Red Rocks. Uh, yeah, uh, announced it yesterday. We're adding a six show in St. Paul, Minnesota. Six shows. Six show, Minneapolis. Uh, St. Paul is where it's at. I think it's all the same. And then uh, Dayton, Springfield, all that. Go to the website. You'll see it. Uh, you, Greg, check out Greg Warren's special. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Owen. Uh, the Saturday I'm taking part in a show to benefit Nashville inner city ministry. It's a wonderful organization, um, information on my website about that. And then Sunday I'm at cap city comedy club in Austin. All I've right. never been to Austin. Uh, no uh, that's ever been. Fun. That's great. That club's great. Man. Doing that. Our friend Jen Fullwaller's on the show with me. Nice. All right. All right. Great. So, uh, looking forward, please come to that. Yeah. I'm at the Irvine improv tonight. Oh, wow. if you're listening to this and it feels silly to say, it, but I, at shows, people do come up and go, I heard last minute today. Yeah, it's going to be it is here. true. Yeah. So it does happen if you're in the L.A. area, Irvine and then Ontario, California tomorrow. All the right. Improvs, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll be at the Virginia Beach Funny Bone. Uh, so that's going to be great. All and new I got- material. Uh, yeah, well, no, uh, I will be trying out some stuff because I'm pretty, uh, but I haven't been to Virginia beach in a long time. So whatever I did there would probably be new. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, I got a few theater dates where I'll be in, uh, you know, uh, um, Chattanooga, Austin, um, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and they're later in the year, but, uh, you know, that's some, you know, that's a new some development, big shows. new development to, yeah. for me to be at some this theater cool, dates. So man. do check those out. Paramount. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. It's great. The Walker theater in Chattanooga is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh. it's going to be great. Awesome. All right. Uh, as always, as from humans <laughs> to you yeah. humans, yeah. we love you humans. We love you. We love you and, uh, Have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.